Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, November 19th, 2022. It's me and you and Micah, episode 1945. Stay tuned, a special guest in hour number two. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Unify Meeting from Mimo Monitors. Unify simplifies your work life by combining your favorite video conferencing solutions into one reliable, universal user interface. Visit unifymeeting.com, enter the code TECHGUY50 for 50% off a year's subscription, or use the code TECHGUY to get 25% off any of Mimo's displays. Limited time offer. And by Cashfly. Deliver your video on the network with the best throughput and global reach, making your content infinitely scalable. Go live in hours, not days. Learn more at cashfly.com. Thanks for listening to this show. As an ad-supported network, we are always looking for new partners with products and services that will benefit our qualified audience. Are you ready to grow your business? Reach out to advertise at twit.tv and launch your campaign now. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Micah Sargent's here too, tech Hello. guy too. You get double your pleasure, double your fun, double your tech guys, a double mint gum. Bum. We should do a double mint gum ad. People I will be very confused. We're dressing green. We don't look like twins, so that'll be a problem. Be extremely confused. <laughs> Uh, we are here to help you with technology today. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number, 888 Eight two six seven over five five three six. I've only been doing this nineteen years. Give me a break. Eight 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 two seven five five three six. That's it. You got it. You've got it memorized. Thank goodness somebody does. <laughs> That's toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. You could still call outside that area, uh, but you'll have to use uh, your uh, your Skype out or something like that. We do get calls from all over the world, which is part of the fun. Of the Tech Guy Show. Look at my wires. <laughs> You're a little messy over there. It's a little messy. You know, so people probably don't know, but we stream video of the show. And uh, the problem with video and technology is <laughs> wires. <laughs> Seeing all the mess. Wires. So I'm pushing all the wires. But, you know, you, you can only push them so far. True. Then they met, meet the other wires on the other side, and you can't go any farther. And they all mingle, and it's just, oh, it's a mess. It's a mess. So uh, I don't know what to say about... <laughs> all the stuff. All the stuff. All the tech stuff. It's been kind of cray-cray this week. Uh, Elon, uh, you know, I don't even know. I think a lot of the things that come out of, uh, uh, come out in the press and stuff about Twitter are made up, wrong, anecdotal. So it, I don't even know what to believe. Yeah, it's hard, right? Because you have people who are trying to get the story out as quickly as they possibly can, which it was f interesting watching how Twitter was the place where the news was breaking about Isn't Twitter. Funny? <laughs> but then you have people who are, you know, they, they take their time, uh, but then sometimes get duped by people who claim to have worked for Twitter who didn't work for yes. Twitter. It's just, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. Here's what I'll say. Uh, if you if you use Twitter, and really it's a small number of people, it's mostly uh, a cer certain groups of people that, mm -hmm. that love Twitter, uh, and unfortunately one of those groups is the media, so it gets a, a kind of undue, uh, a, a disproportionate amount of coverage right. in the media. And when something happens on Twitter, you know, even though nobody <laughs> saw it, uh, you know, I, did, I just saw the, uh, this stat, and I think it's true: eighty percent of Twitter users are outside the U.S. Re wow. Yeah. So of the, say, a, around 300 million users, um, only about 60 million are, uh, are U.S. So that's a tiny number. And, and I don't, you know, anyway, um, I guess I'll just say this. If you love Twitter and you use Twitter, it's fine. Keep using Twitter because even though it seems like even more have left. Mm -hmm. um, last week, Elon uh, sent out, a, 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 we know this is true. He sent out an email to the remaining staff, he's already fired half of them, saying, uh, we're going to be hardcore. And if you don't want to be hardcore, whatever, by the way, didn't define that, didn't even say what the mission of the company, what the plan is or right. anything. Just if you want to be hardcore, 
go to this form on Google, by the way. <laughs> go to this Google form and uh, and say yes. Otherwise, uh, we'll we'll start your severance process and you have three months pay. So in other words, say yes or quit. Now, I think a lot of people just ignored it. Right. Even though there was a deadline. The deadline was Friday at about 2 p.m. Eastern uh, Pacific. Uh, but I think a lot of people just ignored it. But the story from people who were exiting is that a, a large number, maybe another 1,000 to 1,200 engineers exited at that point. Uh, which, if you already cut it by half, to cut it by half again is a you know pretty soon. You there can't... are only so many halves. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, you know that, that's that's. So I think there. What happened was through the week, through the Friday night and uh, this morning, um, there was a lot of sad. It felt like uh, people were saying goodbye to each other on Twitter. There was yeah. a lot of sadness. Yeah. Like it's all over and stuff. And I just want to say it's not all over. I, I was very careful not to partake in that because it's true. It's not. Um, Even if they lost every engineer, it's engineered to continue to run. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a good system will run, can run for years. There are, <laughs> is anybody running MySpace? Probably not, but they, it's still there. <laughs> uh, unless, you know, unless something weird happens and it breaks it, which, by the way, the World Cup starts tomorrow. Day after Thanksgiving is England, U.S. Could see some fail whale happening. Traditionally, that is a very busy. That will be the stress test. If it's if it gets through the first week of the World Cup, especially if it gets through Black Friday, because then you also have all the Black Friday tweets. People are home, uh, you know, the, trying to ignore their relatives. So I think going right. I think Friday is going to be the test, and I'm going to bet because there's some very good people worked there, and and maybe even still are some working there. Uh, they'll keep it running. Mm -hmm. They can do it with a skeleton crew. Um, That's so, Elon's hope for the, at the very least. So yeah, and you know, it seems self-destructive. Uh, there, there are all sorts of theories about what's going on over there. It could just be, uh, I don't know what. Maybe he thinks, uh, you know, I, it, we're gonna just, you know, how you get a, a car. Sometimes you get a really old, beat-up car, and you just tear it down. To the bones, you strip, you take everything apart, you strip off all the rust, mm -hmm. and you reassemble it. And maybe that's his plan. Maybe he's going to turn it into a 1960 DeSoto. I don't know. I was going to say 64 Impala. <laughs> that's what my dad yeah, did. With the 64 it. Impala. Did he do that? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Stripped it all the way down, got yeah. rid of the rust, built, yeah. rebuilt the engine, rebuilt the engine, thing. put new rings in. Yeah. Maybe that's what he's doing. Uh, so you know that's what he's gonna have to do. <laughs> it's like whether he wants whether, whether that he was wants his to plan or, not, or not. He's already taking the he's, engine apart. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's in pieces now. Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot of money to spend for a beater. Forty four billion dollars for uh, a sixty like four Impala. They buy yeah they buy these ridiculous <laughs> houses that are just torn to pieces. Oh the 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 bones the of bones it. We are can good. really do this. You know the bones are good at Twitter because really what you're buying when you buy Twitter is the users. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of users have left. Uh, we don't know how many have left. Elon said it was the busiest day of in history on Twitter on Friday. A lot of people visiting to see who is it still there? Right. <laughs> uh, but and a I, lot of people posting their final tweets yeah, too. Where, yeah. You know, you wouldn't have that normally. I had I had left earlier, um, and that's fine. You know, I we can we can live. We'll survive in a world without Twitter. <laughs> in true. a world without Twitter. Um, CBS News left. Did yeah, that, that surprised me. Um, I wonder if we're going to see more brands are leaving, advertisers it. leaving. I think it's an interesting choice. Here's the pros and cons. On the one hand, if you're a good, a big news organization, stay there because if as if quality news organizations depart the platform, then what's left? Uh, a bunch of propagandists, and uh, and it just it it deteriorates further. But on the other hand, you can understand if you're a brand that you wouldn't want your brand associated as it becomes. And there, you know, there's more hate. There's all sorts of stuff going on. I, t I just don't know. I, I'm going to stand back and, and just watch with that's, interest. Yeah. That's what, what I've been do? doing. This Facebook, you know, kind of teetering as well. Uh, some have said it's the, it's social media is over, but then, but is TikTok social media. I think TikTok's more like television. Fair. YouTube's more like television. Yeah. Most people, Vast majority, probably ninety nine percent of it, are the consumers watch, but yeah. don't tick TikTok yeah. or YouTube. Um, they're great content engines, and so maybe that's what we're seeing is because uh, that's how people used Twitter, isn't it? As like they post pictures of their sandwich, and 
their their deep thoughts and their witticisms and try and get you know a bunch of retweets from a joke they make or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. I guess yeah, maybe Twitter is a lot more work, and that's why people <laughs> it's too much work. Yeah, well, that's too much work. Too much work to read too. I you know I always had a problem because I'd read it. And I feel like am I is it, am I am I having a stroke? I don't I don't understand what is going on. That was my Threads, chief. If you're missing something, that was my chief reaction to Twitter's. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Uh, Scott Wilkinson coming up. He's going to talk about home theater. Uh, we've got uh, Johnny Jet in the second hour. I think we might have a visitor from the east mm. in the second hour. Interesting. Uh, apartment 14C in the Arconia. Uh, we'll, please, we'll be stopping by. And uh, in hour number three, Dick D. Bartolo, The Giz, which is going to be a great show. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're glad you're here. Your calls, too, at 8888-ASK-LEO. Website, techguylabs.com. And we'll go to the phones right after this. I didn't mention uh, Mastodon because I just, I don't... You're kind of protecting it a little I'm bit. I'm protecting it. I don't... Um, it's expensive to... I've paid for... It's 389 bucks a month for up to 6,000 users at this point. We're about 3,500, I think. Really? Well, I mean, roughly. That's what, that's what uh, our host says, is that what we've got probably could handle about, uh, about 6,000 users. I didn't realize it cost you money to run the. Well, it used to cost me when, when it was a ghost town. It was fifteen. It was fifteen euros a month. <laughs> uh, oh, what's happening? Oh, John, you haven't finished setting up the uh, stuff. I guess you could take back the con if you. Or no, you don't need to do that, right? I don't know. For what's going on? Yeah. Um. It was 15 euros for the first three years running running it. <laughs> and then uh, two weeks ago, uh, I'll, I'll never forget the day, October 27th. <laughs> oh, dear God. Uh, suddenly, uh, it, got, it kind of started to get slow. And people were having trouble posting photos. That was the symptom. And I looked at my um, stats, and it was like, at the time, it was like, there, well, there's 300,000 requests that haven't been processed. Ooh. And it was like, oh. So um, I, I paid a little more, paid a little more, paid. Finally went to the top uh, le tier, mm -hmm. which is 385, something like that. And that's, and, and, and Hugo, who got, who's the guy who runs Masto Host, which is our host, said that should probably be good to about 6,000 people. But it's all, it's all roughly, depending on how active they are and got stuff. Got it. So um, we'll just wait and see. We'll see what happens. Wow. But I don't, but that's why I don't, I, I really want it to be just for, Twit listeners. Yeah. And I had initially, uh, I was letting people in who um, just said, I want out, I want out. But now I'm kind of regretting that some of them have bad habits. They're, they don't wipe their feet, things like that. So, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I'm going to, I'm carefully now only uh, approving people who say they listen to a show mm. or they're in club Oh, Twitter. do you have like a survey that starts? At yeah, you, it's, it's, it's not open. It's mm. uh, you have to say why you want to, why you want me to approve you. Got it. And I'm approving about a hundred people uh, a day now. So this looks calm down a little bit. It was about 500 for a while. Well, Dr. Mom, of course, as soon as I saw you, there was no question. If you, you know, I just don't want, uh, people who don't know what Twit is. I want it to be the community. So yeah. if you follow the local timeline, then it's the Twit community. Right. Which it should be, as it should be, not just kind of randos. Nothing wrong with randos, but they can join a more rando server. So I'm not discriminating exactly. But I mean, that's part of, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, the whole nature of this. Is yeah. If you yeah. do your own server, you get to choose. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, the idea is to make a community that, uh, I would start one where only people who agree with the truth that white chocolate is not chocolate. You could have the white chocolate mastodon. Yeah. Where we Which all might know, attract the wrong right. sort. No, it, it's, I guess it would really be the chocolate mastodon. Chocolate. Because white chocolate is not chocolate. It's not chocolate. Brown chocolate. Yes, I'm not discounting its It's the brown chocolate mastodon. 
<laughs> that also might have trekked the wrong yeah, kind of people. <laughs> so, yeah, if you say I'm a twit, let me in, uh, then that will be okay. But Especially lots of people like say I'm fleeing the, tw the you know, Twitter Armageddon and stuff like that. And I don't know if you know what you're going. You may have just chosen it at random. That's why I don't put it on um, joinmastodon.org or any of that stuff. Because zip, zip. Just between us, kids. Kim Schaffer, hello. <laughs> Hi. That's your theme for the day. Okay. <laughs> Haven't heard that one before. Who is that? It sounds like a fake Paul McCartney. <laughs> It is Paul McCartney. <gasps> okay. Wow. It's not fake Paul McCartney. It's actual Paul McCartney. It's Paul McClartney. <laughs> Paul McClartney. <laughs> Paul McClartney. Um, yeah, it did sound a little bit like him, but I guess there's a reason for that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> because it was. Hello, Kim. Hello. <laughs> um, obviously, before he was the Beatles, he was somebody Himself. else. He yeah. was Paul McClartney. <laughs> right. <laughs> Kim Schaffer answers the phone. She puts you on the air and... Uh, We'll be keeping an eye on the hotline. The hotline I know bling. when that hotline blinks. Yeah, Sometime the hotline in bling. the next 45 <laughs> minutes, keep your eye on the hotline. Again, I, I will expect... have no other screens open. <laughs> <laughs> I usually have screens covering that little No watching. No button. watching football. Are you going to watch the uh, World Cup? No. No. no I've, I've, I've mixed feelings about it because of <laughs> Cotter, honestly. Because of who? Cotter. That's the welcome back. The welcome back. The country they're in, Qatar. <laughs> oh, Qatar. Uh, Qatar. Or Qatar, if Qatar, you want. Qatar, yeah. Qatar. Because uh, thousands died to build those stadiums. Oh. It's not really a soccer country. It's extremely hot. Really the hot, stadium yeah. has to be air conditioned. Also, I don't think they're allowed to have alcohol there. They no, banned Budweiser players, 12 like... hours before the start. <laughs> How un American. They banned beer, even though Budweiser paid $12 million wow. to be a sponsor. And uh, they kind of are yeah, not big on human rights. No, I, yeah, I don't know why they would don't choose really like that women thing. or gay people or any of that. So I'm not sure. I don't know. The thing is, I support the athletes. They, it's not yeah. their fault. Not a fan of FIFA, I guess. <laughs> I love the World Cup. Every four years, I watch it like religiously. So I don't know. I guess I'll probably watch it. U.S. England on uh, Friday. Well, I know a lot of people who will be frequently frequenting the pubs. Yeah. <laughs> the next we have a few English pubs in yeah. town, yeah. Who should I start with uh, on this fine Well, because you're talking morning. about uh, the Twitter and the Mastodon, let's oh, just gosh. Uh, let's just stay on topic. Let's get Tom, right into Tom, it, huh? Tom in Keene, New Hampshire needs help setting up his Mastodon. Oh, good. Okay. Thank Hello, you, Kim. Leo. Hey, Tom. How are things Hello, in Keene? Hello. Uh, cold, very cold, but not snowy. That's a good thing. Yeah. We don't want any more snow for a while. Let me tell you how wimpy we are. It got. It was like 47 degrees yesterday, and, and Lisa that and I That would have been nice. Oh, we're so cold. Oh. That would have been nice. <laughs> if that was a low, that would have been nice. I know. I know. Uh, yeah, it's 57 right now. We're, oh, it's so chilly. I love it. It's beautiful. <laughs> I like it chill. Mike is from Missouri. He's used to it. Uh, I'm like, yeah. ah, bring the chill. So what What can we uh, What can we do to help you uh, today, Tom? <clears throat> well, first of all, I am a Club Twit member. Thank you. Thanks. And love to love Twit. Love to listen to you. Listen to the big show on Sunday. Listen to Iowa Today. He's talking uh, about our podcast uh, network, Twit, T W I T dot TV. Right. Not Twitter. And no, not, <laughs> not Twitter. Twitter. Twit. Twit. We predate Twitter wanna, this week in tech. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to get our Mastodon. I'm trying to figure out how it works. And I think I did it right, but I might have messed up. So I need you to tell me one, did I mess something up? And second, how do I get on your server? Well, let me give you the little uh, the little Mastodon explanation here for people who are wondering, what is he talking about? Yes, it's an extinct <coughs> elephant ancestor, but it's also <laughs> something that's been around for a long time. In fact, starting in about 2008, when Twitter was only a year old, uh, a guy named Evan Prodromu created something called Laconica, became Identica, and then became StatusNet. And his idea was we could make a Twitter that isn't owned by one company that isn't even on one server but that a bunch of people run their own little twitters kind of like you remember bulletin boards like they run their little twitters but you can enter operate so that i can follow somebody on anybody else's it's more like email in a way kind of in the sense that everybody has different email servers but we can all email each other right on uh so this this status net then merged with gnu social 
became something, a standard called activity pub. Brow anything, a lot of things are, are members of activity pub. So this is important, by the way, because this is the underlying technology. So if you have a WordPress blog, it can be on activity pub. Microblog is on activity pub. There, there's a, a YouTube clones. There's Instagram clones. There are a lot of different activity pub members, all of which can talk to one another and you can follow anybody. For instance, pixel fed, which is uh, a Instagram clone. I can, I'm on pixelfed.social, but you can be on any, there are lots of servers and anybody can follow me anywhere. And there's no advertisers, there's no central owner. And so a lot of people are turning to this. Mastodon is one of many different ways you can do activity pub. It's now the biggest. Seven million people have left Twitter and joined Mastodon in the last two weeks, uh, trying to find a, a Twitter a friendly Twitter-like place that isn't owned by a billionaire. <laughs> it's not owned by anybody. So there are many, many, many Mastodon servers at last count more than 5,000. And yeah, I run one I have for years. Uh, we used to call it the Twit Army Canteen back in the 2008s. Uh, now it's just twit.social. But we want it to be for, and this is the thing about these, you join an instance they call them instances, these servers. You join an instance, ideally, not the big instance. There are many really big ones. But one that is like your community. Like if you like teddy bears, it's a teddy bear instance. There's instances for all kinds of things. So the first thing to do is figure out what your affinity group is and join that one. Why? Because when you're on uh, Mastodon, there's a local feed that's everybody on your instance, your clubhouse. So join somewhere where it's your clubhouse. But then... You can find out Stephen Fry, for instance, is on Mastodon, the, the comedian, love him. A lot of, uh, no, nobody super famous. Um, uh, George Takei of Star Trek just joined. That's kind of cool. Um, and he's on his own instance, um, uh, run by somebody else. But you follow him by following his name at, and the name of that instance. Um, so... What, the first thing to do is get is choose an instance and get on it. So, yeah, come to Twit Social. That's fine. Um, if you feel like you'd want to be a part of that group of people, and since you're in Club Twit, I think you probably probably fit the bill. And then we'll help you. But you, you know, watch. There's two other feeds. There's the feed of people you follow, just like Twitter. No matter where they are, that's your home feed. And there's something called the Federated right. Timeline, which is all the people on your server. The, the people they follow, friends of friends. And so that's a good way to find people. There are lots of other ways. There's even tools that'll let you take your Twitter, f the people you follow on Twitter and move them over uh, if they have a Mastodon account. And now now more people do. So, um, but the nice thing is it isn't about celebrities. It's not about billionaires. It's a it's a tightly knit community of, of friends. Um, so find one that fits your interests Join that. Ours, you have to ask to join, and then I'll let you in uh, because we don't want to be overrun by spammers and stuff. There shouldn't be any spam. There should only be nice people saying nice things. It's not. It's that's why it's not Twitter, is it? And it's just one of many activity pub things. So it's a very cool idea. We'll look for. We'll look for. Uh, look for you, Tom, Leo, and Micah. Your tech guys, Scott Wilkinson, coming up. So I'll, I'll look for your handle, but it's very, you know, if you look at it, I'll, and I'll pull it up here, it looks very much like, uh, this is the, what they call the advanced web interface. It looks very much like Twitter. I'll go to the, I'll go to the non-advanced, oh gosh, now it's getting really slow. I think I think I shouldn't have mentioned it on the radio. <laughs> Tom, if if you went to twit.social in your browser and chose to create an account, then you okay. have done what you needed to do. Then I will and follow. So, yeah, I will. I, 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 yeah, I opened up the main the main Mastodon app and said, "What's everybody you want?" And I there is okay. So this is the important thing. I think a lot of people have this misapprehension. There's a main app. There is not. Okay, well, this is the There's iOS not. app that said Mastodon. So that's what I signed up with. Yeah. yeah. That's run by the guy who wrote Mastodon. Okay. Uh, he runs Mastodon.social and Mastodon.online. I generally don't recommend those because they're so big. There are 100,000 okay. people on them, and they're sluggish because that's where everybody goes because they think it's the official I Mastodon. couldn't upload a photo the other day. Yeah, on it. it's not the official Mastodon. There's many. So you, because you okay. are a club member, should go to twit.social and say, I want to join. This is the home feed. Social... That's website. it.
Just just go to a website called twit.social. It'll explain everything. Okay. And then okay. this is the local timeline. Well, all over again. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The local timeline is people who are just on Twit Social. You don't have to follow them. You are, you know, you see everybody who's there. This is the right. federated timeline, which is everybody, everybody on Twit Social follows. And this one gets quite okay. busy and fast because, um, you know, there's lots of people. So this is more like the everything on Twitter, but it isn't because it, you know, you won't see everything on here. But it's a good place to look for people to follow. And then once you start following people, you'll have a home timeline, which is the people you follow. So and then I, can use, then I can go back and use that app and log into it? That that yeah, then you go into that app and you say Twit Social, twit.social. Okay. And then it will go to the website and say, hey, and you'll log into the website and it'll send a token to the app. By the way, if you are you on iOS? Yes. Don't, I recommend instead of the Mastodon app, use a map called MetaText. Meta yeah, I text. That app and I use that second, but I couldn't figure that one out because it wouldn't let me sign in. Yeah. Because I'd already signed up with the main one. Yeah. The other one. Yeah. So Once you, but you can have multiple accounts. You can have as many accounts as you want. But if you want people to follow you, it's good to have one account that you use as your. You I'm only going to use one. Yeah. So yeah. I'll go ahead. But you can have many. One. You can be part of many communities. Yeah. That's fine. It's just a little confusing. Yeah. I've just officially asked to join the Twit server. What? I know. What? But you should keep your old one. I, followed you. I already followed Micah. I've already followed Good. you. I've already followed. So you can take. You can. You can. You can also migrate if you go in the settings. If you're on another server, you can migrate. You can move to a different server. Take all your. Take all your followers with you and all that stuff. We'll include a link in the show notes. There's this great guide on Mastodon that ha will probably answer all of the questions that we can't answer. There's, on the radio there's two. The one time. I generally <laughs> uh, send people to is Mastodon.help. Okay. Uh, and then there's Fedatips, which is at fedatips.org. Okay. Both of those are very good. Mastodon.help is a little more cartoony and easier to understand. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Well, and, if you, well, if you're blind, maybe that won't be such a good idea. Oh, no, no. This is, that's okay. By the way, one of the great things about Mastodon, it's very accessible, but there is an yeah, instance, there is, there is software. You don't want to use Mastodon if you're, well, maybe you don't. If you're blind, there is software that is better for screen readers than Mastodon. Mm -hmm. So, again, this is confusing because people think, well, I want to get on Mastodon. No, Mastodon's just software that gets you onto the okay. Fediverse. You want to get on the Fediverse. Here, stand okay. I got to go for Scott, but um, I will explain more. Stand by. Hey, Scott. Hi, hey, Scott. Leo. Hey, Mika, Mika, how you doing? Mika, well. Mika, Muka. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Up, 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 up. Up, 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 up. There is Feta, Feta Tips which is F-E-D-I dot T-I-P-S, has a lot of accessibility tips. That's a good place to go. What is hip? This cat mm. right here, man. He's the man. hippest man. <laughs> Our own tuba player and home theater geek. Okay, if you can find a connection, good luck. <laughs> Scott Wilkinson, he, he writes for many home theater magazines and, of course, has his own show on YouTube.com slash A-V-S Forum. Joins us every week. To talk about big screen TVs and surround sound and all that. Hi, Scott. All that jazz. Hey, that Leo. Jazz. Hey, Micah. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. What's up? Oh, well, you know, I I uh, mentioned last week that Black Friday is really Black November. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all month long. Yeah. All month long. But, you know, next Friday is the actual Black Friday. So uh, I continue to look for some deals. And I found some. Uh, I mentioned last week that the, the TV deals have not been all that great. I mean, 15 to 20 percent off. OK, that's that's not nothing, but it's not. Wow. You know what I mean? Uh, and those deals are still there. I mean, <laughs> like I said, it's Black November. Um, but I did find a few others. Well, they're all they're all in the 15 to 25 percent range. So, you know, go go look for them. You'll you'll find them. Uh, but the problem with that is that TVs already have what we call razor thin margins, right? The profit margin mm -hmm. that 
that retailers sell TVs and they make a profit, right? But the profit is so narrow. There's so little profit on TVs that a Black Friday deal can't be that great because otherwise they'll lose money. Well, just make it up in volume. No, no, you can't do that. Uh, so, you know, you, you can get some deals, but they're only going to be moderate deals. Now, I found some other deals that are quite a bit better. For example, uh, sound bars. We talk about sound bars a lot, right? Because if you buy a TV and you listen to its internal sound, the little tiny speakers that are built into the TV, it sounds terrible. So we often recommend, I always recommend, if you're going to if you're going to buy a TV and you don't want to listen to the sound, to its own sound, but you don't want to invest in a whole speaker system, get a sound bar because it's going to be a lot better than what the TV is doing. And Monoprice, you've heard of Monoprice, right? Oh, yeah. We love Monoprice. Monoprice is great. And they make a whole series of sound bars, and those are discounted this coming. Well, I think they're. it's now. It's not just next Friday. Uh, they're like 33 to 55 percent off. So, you know, that's that's getting serious. In fact, the one that, that is 55 percent off, the one that's most discounted is one that I actually have and really like. It's called the SB300. It's a 2.0. It doesn't even have a, a subwoofer with it. Um, so it's not going to give you the deep bass. But for a bedroom TV or something like that, it does have virtual surround. It, it takes the sound stage and expands it way beyond the actual physical enclosure of the sound bar. And you can get it now for 90 bucks. List price 200. Nice. So that's really nice. That would be kind of the minimum uh, you would recommend, I would guess, for I, TV I, it sound. Is. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It is. You, you, Monoprice makes less expensive ones than that. They make an SB100 and 200, which are in the $50 range now, uh, down from closer to $100. Um, you know, I so suppose it's possible to make a great soundbar for 50 bucks. I mean, I don't know. Are the parts a good expensive? One <laughs> a good one, anyway. Maybe not a great one. That's but what. Remember Y Z E. Why would you forget? Oh yeah, sure. That's what they kind of specialize in. Is is taking stuff that is overpriced and selling it for closer to the cost of the components. They don't do a soundbar, by the way. Mm. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised at some point. They're really expanding. They now do mesh routers and yeah. doorbells and earbuds and all that stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I I wouldn't be surprised. And that's. Because I often think, when you look at headphones, there's a huge profit margin in there headphones. There is, yep. Because they don't cost that much to make. Um, in the most, for the most part, that's correct. speakers, that's probably true, too, except that there's such an art to designing them. That is correct. That's what that you're paying correct. for, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. Speaking of speakers, Klipsch always has great deals on Black Friday or Black November. And they and this year's no exception. Many, many models, I, I won't list them, they're 40 to 50% off. Which, which, like the soundbar, the Monoprice soundbar deals, gives you a sense that what you just said is true. That there's a big profit margin there and they can afford to slash these prices and still make something. Whereas with TVs, you can't. Retailers like Best Buy and so on, they, they can't because there isn't, much profit margin there to begin with. Hmm. Um, headphones, same thing. I found some really great headphone deals uh, at Best Buy, Sony, for example. The uh, WH One Thousand XM Four. My, they're now up to version five XM Five, but this is by far my favorite noise canceling headphone, which sounds fantastic. Uh, at Best Buy, it's now two twenty eight down from three fifty. That's thirty five percent off. Hmm. Um, the uh, two other companies I want to quickly mention. One is Monoprice again. They also make headphones, and in their Monolith line, which is their higher end audiophile line, uh, they've got a true wireless in ear monitor for fifty bucks down from one hundred and thirty. That's sixty percent off. That's amazing. Um, they have some other audiophile headphones that are similarly like in the 30, 30 to 40% off. Uh, so, yeah. 
and one more. You 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 know the company mm-hmm. one more, right? The number one. The, and you've M-O-R-E. recommended them a lot. I know. I do, and them. they're great. I do. They are. Their triple driver in ear monitor, which is a wired monitor, maybe not so useful these days since phones don't come with uh, headphone outputs anymore. Um, but if you have a headphone output that you can use, this triple driver is sixty-one bucks, down from eighty. Uh, and that's my favorite of the one more headphones, even more than the quad driver, which is, you know, ostensibly better. Uh, that's down, that's to 110 down from 170. Uh, but I, to tell you the truth, I prefer the triple driver. I've listened to them both carefully. More, them. more drivers isn't necessarily better, is it? Isn't necessarily better. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Exactly I, right. I've had that experience. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I, I listen to, uh, I, I for jogging and what have you, I listen. To, I don't jog, but I go on. The- <laughs> <laughs> that was very aspirational of you. <laughs> yeah, it was very aspirational you know, of me. When I climb mountains and run marathons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when I walk and when I get on my stationary bike, I listen to one more true wireless earbuds. I, I like th- those are the ones that go around your neck, the back of your neck, or no? Actually, no. They're just they're just two little gizmos that stick in your ear. But you recommended in the past, and I've really liked the one mores that go around the back of your neck. Correct. They're yeah, harder are, to lose, to be correct. honest. That is correct, yeah. <laughs> My wife uses those all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and those are, I I didn't see those on sale here for Black Friday, but... Because um, then they if they pop good. out of your ears, you're still attached to them. You're still attached to yeah, them, right. Yeah. That's, a whole, that's a whole category of in-ears called neck band. Because oh. they have this neck band thing and then wires that go up to the little gizmos that go in your ear and and for exactly that reason as you said you they're not so easy to lose if they pop out then they're still hanging yeah, there yeah and you can you can grab them they you don't crush them underfoot as you're walking down the street when apple got rid of the headphone jack and then all the other manufacturers oh, samsung and man. Google followed that yeah. was that led to the explosion of these bluetooth you yep. know earbuds and yep. headphones and all that yeah and I guess that's a good thing. They're more convenient, that's for sure. You don't get tangled. Yeah, but in the, the sound wires. quality isn't as good. Yeah, always get wired if you want the best. If you sound can. Quality, yeah. mm-hmm. Home theater geek Scott Wilkinson, YouTube.com/slash AVS Forum. Hey, our show today brought to you by a really useful tool for everybody who does meetings and who doesn't now, right? Zoom. And Google Meet and Microsoft Teams. The problem is, and we do all three. I always click the wrong button because I forget that I'm I'm in Meet and I click the off what I think is the turn the microphone on button and it's the hang up button and it's terrible. But Unify Meeting solves that because it's got one user interface for all three. One reliable universal user interface eliminates the hassle, saves you time, and I let I love it because. It, when you're not in the meeting, Unify runs in the background, just a little thing on your screen with your calendar. So you can see when your next meeting is. If you're in a lot of meetings, this is such a great tool. You click on the meeting, and then it knows what program to launch behind the scenes, and it opens up Unify meetings so you always know exactly how it's working and all that stuff. It's a great way to do all your meetings without worrying about you know which video conferencing app you're using, which command you use. And the best way to use Unify Meeting, I might add, is on a MIMO monitor. So MIMO also makes monitors. So if you have a second display, like the 7-inch MIMO that plugs in the USB port, second display, then Unify Meeting runs all the time in that. That's your calendar display. And when you're in a meeting, that's your meeting display. And the nice thing is, on your other display, you can see Zoom or Meet or uh, Microsoft Teams, so you can see the real interface, but you're also seeing the Unify Meeting interface on the second monitor. Now, that's a great way to operate. Mimo's got a great Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal between November 24th, so it's five days from now, through the 28th, remember those dates, 50% off a Unify license, and 100% of the proceeds go to support the American Cancer Society. So you're doing a good thing. You get 50% off, and you're supporting a good cause. Unify only costs around $20 after the discount for the entire year. But I got an even better way to do this. Buy a MIMO monitor, and then Unify Meeting is free. Try Unify on your team at work. Try it yourself. Go to unifymeeting.com, U-N-I-F-Y-M-E-E-T-I-N-G.com. 
The offer code for the 50% off is TechGuy50. Remember, that is not yet. It's November 24th through the 28th. 50% off for a year's subscription. Or use the offer code TechGuy and 25% off any of Mimo's displays and get Unify free. Now, it's a limited time offer. It is a great deal. I think Unify Meeting is fantastic. You should try it. Simplify with Unify. Unifymeeting.com. The offer code TechGuy50 gets you 50% off a year's subscription. Or use a code TechGuy to get 25% off any of Mimo's displays. That is a limited time offer, November 24th to the 28th. And, of course, all the proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. That's why it's a limited time thing. If you do it today, you'll get a great deal, too. Uh, so if you're in a, if you're impatient like I am, I would immediately go to unifymeeting.com and use the offer code and, and uh, tech guy and uh, and get whatever deal is available. But if you can wait for a few days, that's a good idea. Tech guy 50, 50% 50 off a year subscription. Tech guy 25% off. Thank you uh, to Mimo uh, for supporting the show. Mimo Monitors is a great company. And Unify Meeting is really a really handy tool. Unifymeeting.com. Now... Back to the tech guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> do you want to do a thing, Mr. W? Yes. Uh, you want to do the top of the hour thing? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, say that yeah. thing, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the yeah, thing. happy do. Thank you. <laughs> so that way, my oh, yeah, and man, I I get, you guys get to go get porridge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. It's porridge yeah. time. <coughs> All right. Please, I'll, sir. Are you, are you getting over a cold? No, no, no. Just a little, it's just. Coffee. Just a little morning crud. Yeah, I know that is. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm actually. I have survived pretty well. But a lot of the groups I'm in, the bands I'm in now, a lot of people are out it's back. sick. And, it's back. Yeah, oh, COVID's man. back. Uh, FSV uh, or RSV. RSV. And, uh, and I'm uh, actually flu quite and, nervous. I'm doing Tuba Christmas in in LA, and I'm starting to get a little nervous about it. Oh, we should um, we should mention that. Don't let me forget to mention that next week. Okay. Plug no. Tuba no. No. Christmas. I, yeah. When is that going to be? I, December 4th, 4th, Sunday, December oh, okay. 4th. So we have time. Okay. We have time. All right, we can do it next week. <laughs> you don't really need the tuba, do you? You just, uh, you just do it. Just do yeah. it. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, you know, that's one of the, what what you did just now was, you know, the stereotypical tuba umpa, right? Yeah. Well, it was Micah. Okay. Yeah. He's surprisingly I'd... good at it for a slender. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make him. Well, laugh. yeah. But the Sorry. nice, yeah, really. The nice thing about the nice thing about tuba Christmas is the tuba players get to play the melody. What? Yeah. That's crazy. It's, it's nothing but tubas crazy on the stage, talk. man. Crazy. <laughs> crazy talk. So uh, yeah, I will definitely uh, be talking about that. We, let's let's talk about that next week for sure because that'll be right before. Yeah, actually, be that'll next be a week, week before. It should be next Christmas. week. We should do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That'd Good. be perfect. Okay, perfect. Perfecto. So somebody said about getting the flu shot. I got the flu shot. I got my latest COVID booster, the bivalent booster. So I should be good in that regard, but I, I hear these news stories now that, you know, hospitalizations are up and uh, infection rates are up, positivity rates are up. So um, I'm probably going to wear a mask throughout the whole day of Tuba Christmas, which includes setup and rehearsal and all that stuff and just take it off just for the concert. I was at a theater last night and I wore a mask the whole time I was... Probably yep. one of maybe 10 people in the theater. but In the whole theater? I saw the yeah. picture. You were literally the only one. Yeah, only one masked. Yeah. I just, <laughs> Good for you. I don't blame you. I haven't gotten any of that stuff yet. Knock on and wood. You're not gonna, and I'm going to yeah. do my best to not get any yeah. of it. Yeah, I haven't either. Still, uh, the good news is it's still a little um, okay in Sonoma County. It hasn't started to creep up Has yet. Has it? <laughs> I watched the um, sewage <laughs> he, he literally, he takes a manhole cover off and I just look, looks down. And I can tell. And you look down there and you look can at tell. It and I huh, know. That looks a little yeah. covid -y. Yeah. Or, what is that new COVID -ian. one? covid -ian. AVS or whatever. No, not that. <laughs> RSV. RSV. I can't tell yeah. RSV, but I can. Uh, they do measure the. Oh, AVS we, is not a virus. Yeah, that's Thank your you that's your deal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not coming back to a theater 
uh, I actually have no desire to go to a movie theater. Oh, yeah. Movie theater? Yeah. I didn't even used to be a movie theater yeah. person. Now it's like, no, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. I'm afraid. So I used to be a, a movie theater person. I used to of love Of course going you to did. Movie. You're the home theater guy. I was the home theater guy, so I wanted to see what was going on in commercial cinemas. Yeah, yeah, that's completely reasonable. But uh, no, not 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 yet. I I couldn't I could never focus on the film because, and I know this is oh. ridiculous, but oh, well, we're about to start. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, stick around. <laughs> Absolutely, sure. I love this song. A little bit of Monica. No, in my not that life. one. <laughs> this song is "You're Just My Type." A little bit of Veronica and my, you're just my type. You're just my type. Micah Sargent, he's a tech guy and I'm a tech guy too. And we're here for you. Double the tech guys on Saturday. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Uh, we were talking about Mastodon and I think... I, I want to start calling it the Fediverse, which is really going to confuse people. <laughs> it's all confusing. But Mastodon is just one of many ways you can join the federated universe of social networks. Uh, and it's not even, it's the biggest, but it's not necessarily the best. And we were we were talking before the break to Tom, who's a blind user. <clears throat> and there are actually, uh, you can use Mastodon. And one of the nice things about um, the Mastodon ethos, as opposed to, say, Twitter or Facebook is, is you're really strongly encouraged to consider blind users by putting alt tags on all of your images. Yes. Everybody does. It's a nice culture. Uh, not using too many uh, emojis in a row because it sounds so dumb uh -huh. on your screen reader. And uh, and then hashtags are really important on Mastodon. It's something uh, you know advanced users know that you, you don't just follow people, you follow hashtags. But it's a recommendation for uh, screen readers that you intercap so if you're if you're um, if you're saying, well, I want to do hashtag my beautiful cat, you would capitalize my beautiful and cat, so that the screen reader instead of saying my beautiful cat, would say my beautiful cat. Got it. And uh, and that's really uh, the three things that can make a big difference for blind users. But there are there is also software on the Fediverse that's designed for blind users. It's a little bit better for screen readers. There's even command line versions of this and that's why i use the term fediverse because mastodon is just software to let you access the federated universe of social networks there's many many ways to do that and all of them have one common attribute you can follow anybody on any of these programs from any other so i i i think there's a lot to be said for the future of this we've seen what it's like uh when you have a centralized thing then you're kind of at the mercy of the person who runs it. Mm -hmm. We get calls all the time from people who, whose Google accounts have been closed. And who are you, where are you going to go? Are you going to knock on the door of the local Google office near you? <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. There's very little recourse. Same thing if you get hacked on Facebook or, or Twitter decides they don't like what you're saying and they take your account down. Because these are centralized places, they're businesses... Uh, whoever runs the business gets to run it any way they want and even run it into the ground. That's their privilege. Uh, so the nice thing about this decentralized network, this Fediverse, is nobody owns it. Every Everybody who's running an instance, that's what they call these servers, gets to run it the way they want. You pick an instance with somebody you like that runs it the way you want it to be run. There are some instances where anything goes and uh, there's some instances where uh, it's family friendly. Um, it, so there's there's a very broad variety of cultures that are, are respected. Uh, and I just think it's just the right way to do it. I think we've seen now that centralization is brittle uh, and, it, and it operates in, on the behalf of the owner, not on behalf of the user. In fact, in a sense, you're really the <laughs> you're, you're the field hands working for the guy who owns the place. Right. Aren't you? Yeah. Contributing and putting all your stuff up there. 8888-ASK-LEO. Uh, let's go on to Kevin, Las Vegas. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Leo. I got to let you know about an iPad repair, strike for uh, uh, repair, you know, self-repair and all of that that you've been talking about. Actually, Mike yeah. is the expert on this. He's the guy who actually ordered all those tools and parts. <laughs> and, and stuff. Well, I didn't do it myself. I, I had an, I have a third-generation iPad Pro 12.9, and about a month and a half ago, the port, the charging port wasn't working. It was very spotty. So Brandon, the Apple, do a genius bar, 
and they look at it and they clean it out and they do all the gyrations and put, do different cables. No, it's not working. And they said, well, we don't fix them, but we can sell you a, another third generation for 650 bucks. Is it? Yeah, I don't think that's so. not a don't good deal. Fix them. Wow. Apple says what? we don't fix them. No, they they fix the screens. I know they do. That. Oh yeah, they yeah. If something internal's yeah. gone wrong. Got it. Yeah. It was a port. So I said, all right. Well, so I searched on uh, YouTube just for the heck of it, and I saw this how to repair your iPad. There's, as a, well. there's a wonderful okay. guy, Louis Rossman, who owns well, a repair you. shop in Manhattan, and does great videos and all all this self repair stuff. He's incredible. Well, well, I found another one, that, and he went through the whole thing, and I said, well, this is well, way above my pay grade. But at the end, he said, I do fix it myself. You just mail it to me, and I'll send it back after I fix it for a reasonable fee. And it turns out the guy isn't here in Las Vegas. Oh! oh. I, don't have, I don't have to mail it to him. So I, he lives like five minutes away from Oh, me. that's funny. <laughs> so I was able to drive down there and drop it and off. And he fixed it? it up, and he fixed 199 bucks. Fixed the port, which was wrong. He went through little diagnostics. He's got all kinds of equipment, and uh, fixed it. One hundred ninety nine dollars later, I have my three third generation back again instead of spending a fortune. And I got to give him a plug. It's a great. It, his site is vccboardrepairs.com. dot uh, com. His name is Jesse Cruz. He's local here to Las Vegas. And like I say, you can mail it in if you don't live nearby. But if you do, boy, anybody in Vegas, just go drop it off and you can pick it up. He did it the same day, as a matter of fact. We'll put the link in the show notes, yep. VCC Repair. Yeah. So it, this is uh, actually a good thing to know is that most companies nowadays, when they repair something, they don't repair it. Apple's a really good example of this. They do board level, what they call board level repairs. This has gone on forever. I, uh, I had a MacBook, tw tw I think it was almost 20 years ago. That I, uh, back before the MagSafe, when they, you plugged it in, you plugged it in a connector and it fell and it snapped the connector port. And Apple wanted, uh, you know, $1,000 at least to replace. They said, oh, no, we have to replace the motherboard if that breaks. I brought it to a friend who had a little shop back in the day when you could have a little Mac shop. And he said, oh, no, no we just solder that back on. <laughs> so I fixed it. It was 12 bucks, And... Uh, uh, it's just unfortunate that Apple, and you know what? It's because they do such a volume of repairs, et cetera, et cetera. When I spilled coffee into my uh, my MacBook, uh, brought it to Apple, uh, they said thirteen hundred bucks. It's uh, you know we're gonna have to replace the motherboard. Um, I don't have a happy ending on that. Maybe if I knew this guy at VCC Board Repair, yeah, I would. seriously. <laughs> uh, you could see the chip that it melted, um, and that would have had to been removed from the other board. They don't solder them on anymore. They're what they call surface mounted. It would have taken some real skill to get rid of it. I'm glad that worked out for you, Kevin. That's great. Yeah, I, I got another question, though. Uh, I've been uh, having issues. I think it might have been since I updated to Ventura. The uh, desk, well, first of all, that I have a recommendation for desktop icons because they were shifting all over the place after waking up from sleep. So there's a uh, on Mac update. There's a, a DIM. It's called Desktop Icon Manager, and it keeps them where you put them. And it's it's worked for the last week now. I haven't had a problem when it's waking from sleep. The icons stay where I put them. And there's all kinds of things you can do to customize that too. So it's a great little app, free. Uh, so I I swear by that. But the one issue I'm having is my Windows won't stay. From wake, when they wake up from sleep, I have three monitors, and when one when they go to sleep, for some reason the uh, oh, I see what's going on. He's got different resolutions, huh? Uh, well, and and I've, and I've heard also too from the forums that wake from sleep and sleep is at different times for different monitors. That could be a part of the issue. Yeah. So this is the problem: is the machine goes into a certain level of, of sleep when it does go to sleep, and part of that sometimes includes kind of shutting down the communication between those external monitors and the main uh, computer that you have. And so when that wakes from sleep, then it re-realizes, oh. There are some external monitors plugged in. It pushes out the displays to those monitors, and then that causes the tech, the windows that you have to shift a little bit. Uh, about the only way that I have seen that's been able to fix this is making some rather drastic adjustments to the uh, energy settings, but that involves using a lot more energy, of course. <laughs> in other words, don't sleep. Yeah. 
Keep your eyes open. You never know when they're going to sneak up on you. Leo and Micah, your tech guys. More calls right after this. <laughs> never sleep. <laughs> that was your mistake. All right, Scott. It's coffee time. Ta -ra -ra, it's coffee time. Coffee time. Ta -ra -ra, it's coffee, time. coffee time. <laughs> Okay, right. All hello, yours, my friend. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Happy to help. And there is the timer. Yay! So, hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. Got a podcast coming up this Tuesday. My guest is going to be Rob Brennan. He's the uh, product technology manager for home entertainment uh, products at Sony. So, we're going to be talking about Sony stuff. Uh, not from a advertorial point of view. I'm very conscious of, of avoiding that. Uh, but Sony does a lot of interesting things and, uh, they are worth talking about. So, uh, I hope you'll tune in. That should be a lot of fun. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Phil D 99, I guess it is. As the technological advances of AV receivers reached the, a ceiling, why would I want to upgrade a 2017 AV receiver? Uh, good question. <clears throat> and the reason is, uh, we haven't reached a ceiling. As long as technology continues to improve, uh, we will continue to need to upgrade eventually. It doesn't have to be every year like some people do. But 2017, we didn't have HDMI 2.1 yet. And as far as I can recall, Mike Heiss, you might be able to correct me on that if I'm wrong. But I think, uh, yeah, we didn't have, for the most part, AV receivers certainly didn't have HDMI 2.1 capabilities. Now, if you have a TV from 2017, then there's no need to upgrade. But if you get a new TV with HDMI 2.1, and which is a faster HDMI, basically, it carries more kinds of data than HDMI, than the earlier versions, then uh, you probably want to upgrade your receiver as well and, and maybe your source devices as well. Uh, do you have a 4K TV currently? If not, and you upgrade to a 4K TV, then yeah, you might very well want to uh, upgrade the receiver. Newer receivers will support more... Uh, high dynamic range formats. So from 2017, did we have Dolby Vision then? Did we even have HDR then? I'd have to go back and do a little research. That's now uh, five years ago. <coughs> so let's see. Uh, the Cop King, what is the best 32 inch TV available? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't, pay much attention to TVs below 55 inches or maybe 48. Uh, so 32, I, 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 I don't know. I don't pay a lot of attention to those. That That's more in the monitor size of things. Hey, Scott, I hate to interrupt you. Oh, sure. But I have a special uh, person on the line. I want to I want to go to it real quickly uh, oh, sure. before we go back on the air. But oh, I want to no, thank fine. you. We'll talk next week. Let's do Tuba Christmas. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thanks a, thanks a bunch. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. I got to push this button and say hello. I think Charles Hayden Savage is on the line. Am I correct? Yes. Charles <laughs> Hayden Savage is here finally alone without those cumbersome other two. So annoying, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, do I call you Charles or Charles Hayden? Well, you know, the actual, we thought it was funnier if my first name was hyphenated. hyphenated. My first name is actually Charles Hayden, and then my last name is Sasson. <laughs> From uh, Apartment 14C, it's good to talk to you. Yep. We're not on the air yet. We are on the podcast, just so oh, okay. you know how it stands. We're going to go on the air in uh, a few minutes. So, you're, Okay, that's you're, fine. But anyway, it's great to hear from you. Yeah. And have you started taping the new, uh, new new season? Not till January. We will, but it's being written, and we're on it. I mean, for those of you 
your podcast listeners have no idea who's Charles Hayden Savage. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> knows who Charles Brazos. <laughs> we all know that. Uh, right. <laughs> I, I will live. I will dwell within your compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's comfy. <laughs> Hey, so uh, should I, uh, you know, the, the the news that I have, we wait, of course, till the you're on the air, and yes. then I'll, I'll just sort of, you want to go with it sooner rather than later? Whatever whatever you want. I mean, I want to talk about the book. Uh, obviously, I want to talk about the show, to. and I have prepared yeah, an answer for your questions. Yeah, okay. Well, I've given up on a few questions. I know, I know. It hasn't been... It has been 15 years. It's literally, never been able to correct it. it's literally so, been more than a decade. <laughs> yeah. I have one solution because I found one app that doesn't Calend do that awful, awful thing. Calendar was. You know, I try to explain Calendar. it to Micah. Micah's here also. I try to explain it to Micah. Uh, and he said, wait, I don't understand. I said, no, look, <laughs> I don't really either. But this is this is how... so. If I'm correct, this is the idea. You would say, you would write down, no matter where you are, I'm going to talk to Leo at, what did you write, 3 p.m.? Right. Well, that's not a good example. Oh, yeah. The example is, uh, I'm going to have lunch with Leo in California at noon. Yes. But now I'm in New York, so I write in, uh, I'm going to have lunch with Leo at noon. But I know it's California. The app, the calendar app, does not know. So it either says, well, do you want your time to be based on the iPad or your time zone? Right. So you choose one of those. All I, and so that means that somewhere the time is wrong. <laughs> it, I just wanted to say 3 p.m. You just live such a bi-coastal life. That you know, when you say 3 p.m., it's wherever I am, it'll be 3 p.m. Yeah, yeah. But I, don't, I think it's, it's designed this way for assistants who send out Maybe. mass, you know, calendar right. meetings or something. So they want it to be all time zoning. But I think it's, wouldn't it be simple to have an option to say, <laughs> don't change the time, time no matter what. <laughs> 15 years. 15 years. There's only one app I found, and sometimes it promises. Uh, I'll look it up and say, how do you stop it from changing the time? They say, it's simple. You just say, use your iPad time. Well, that doesn't work because when you change, go to California, your iPad time right. changes. Well, you can turn off the time change in your iPad, but you don't really want that either. Yeah, because then, then your iPad won't change time, and you want it to change time. Right. Or your phone, yeah. So that's why it's complicated. Yeah, this, you have different things that have different... I've been pondering this one. Micah Sargent is here. He, he does a show with me. He's actually an iOS expert. I brought in a, a true expert. A true expert. And I, I spent some time yesterday fiddling with the built-in calendar app using my third-party <laughs> calendar app that I use, and I haven't found one that's a mind reader, and that's what you need. You need one that can sort of know what you want. I, I was talking to Leo about it. And I said, well, if he types in uh, meeting at 3 p.m. Pacific, then it will be in the Pacific time zone. But it sounds like you're wanting something that you don't even have to go as far as typing in Pacific afterward. You no, just... Why would I want to do that? <laughs> I'm, I'm busy. Right, right. And also, if you do that Pacific time zone, it shows up on your New York calendar, say, Three hours later. Uh huh. Yes, so, that's a problem. Yeah. So you kind of you have to guess when when your appointment is. Oh, I've yeah. had you know people miss flights because they check into my calendar and they'd see it in the wrong time zone and they'd, they'd go an hour later to the flight. Anyway, that I, you know what? I'm gonna stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Apple made a Ken Burns effect for iMovie. Maybe they could make a Steve Martin calendar they could do that. effect for iCal and uh, solve this. I think uh, we should talk to someone. You know what? The reason I don't understand why they don't do it is it's so simple. It just says, don't do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't do anything. All you have to write in the code is don't do <laughs> Don't do Just let me handle the time zones. Yeah. All right, Steve, yeah. hang on. We're, going, we're coming up here. All right.
Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, Micah Sargent, your tech guys, too, answering your questions, 8888-ASK-LEO, all the stuff we talk about on the website, techguylabs.com. We're talking high tech on the line from uh, the Arconia in uh, beautiful uh, downtown uh, New York, uh, Charles hey, Hayden, I'll, I'll, I'll apartment, York. apartment 14C. Hey, Leo. <laughs> the beautiful Upper West Side. Is the, are, the, are the leaves changing in Central Park? Is it beautiful? I mean, I'm looking out the wrong window. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think they are. And just to, to be clear, for those of you who aren't, you know, uh, up to the latest hip thing, uh, it's, I'm actually Steve Martin here on the phone with my old friend Leo. Oh, Steve, that's very nice. And I, uh, I have a reason I'm calling in is because there's a little announcement that is going to bring people a little bit of sadness, but they'll, they'll have tolerance and they'll have understanding. I was I wanted you to tell people so they wouldn't, you know, get mad yeah. at me. You, you cheer them Ladies up. Ladies and gentlemen, by the end of this year, Mr. Leo Laporte will be retiring from the radio. Is that accurate, Leo? That is accurate. I uh... Wow. I mean, I've been doing this years. show almost as long as you lived in the Arconia. <laughs> well, you know, you you have provided so much. You know, I sometimes, rarely, only when I have to, call tech support for some app or thing or something. And the there are exceptions, but I won't, I'm not going to mention any names. But sometimes the the person on the other end of the line is arrogant. They say things. <laughs> So quickly, you can't understand what they're talking about, and they just assume, you know, take your uh, USB, download the latest upgrade, and then uh, reload and uh, enter your new password, and there you go. <laughs> Why? And um, you just uh, stay with people. You're kind, you're courteous, you're understanding, and you've just uh, helped so many people. You... And now you're retiring because you're evil and dark. <laughs> true. This is the, true. The darkness yeah. is, you is coming out. You don't want to help people anymore. Yeah. You're tired of helping. You told me once that you started listening uh, on the podcast uh, while you were up in Vancouver doing my the uh, Big Year movie. Yes, might have been, but I, I'm aware of your television. You know, oh, I go okay. back to screensavers, everything. People forget, yeah. or maybe don't know, that you're quite the geek, actually. Uh, not, I, no, not you know, things have changed so fast, but you know, you 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 know what you're doing, you know. You you asked me for a, a, a NAS, and I said, well, get a Synology, and I, can I help you set it up? He said, no, I got this. And you set it all up. Well, that's secretly the company I'm talking about that won't help me. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so it's up and running. It's hey, up and running. Thank you for letting the world know. Take this thing a little bit out. I will. Last show will be December 18th. We're going to keep doing a podcast, wow. but the last uh, show on the radio will be December 18th. And next hey, hour, we're going to talk to my replacement, by the way. He's going to join us next hour. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so, great. So the, so the, the, the radio you're station is going to... You're not a celebratory st guy. Let me just tell you, you're not a, I remember when you did your thousandth show, you sort of went, oh, ho-hum. And then you did your 2000th show and you did Ho Ho. I think you're like that too, though, right? You you, you don't. Yeah. You, you're there to entertain, not to celebrate yourself. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Uh, but you were very excited one New Year's, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't watch that, did you? <laughs> I didn't watch it, but I heard about it. <laughs> I shaved my head and tattooed my butt. It was. Yeah. Yeah. That's. But congratulations and thank you for helping everybody, including me. Uh, you know, just Thank you, Steve. I love, I love your, uh, I won't call them diatribes that start the show, but your Thank you. Your catch up on all that's happening with tech. It's really thank nice. You. Hey, I wanted to yeah. thank you. I want to give you a plug before you ask your question. Cause you're here to ask a question, believe it or not. I am. And I brought my, uh, Mike is the guy for that, but I just want to say, I just finished number one is walking your, your brand new book that you did with uh, cartoonist, Harry bliss. It, I could not stop laughing. It is really great. Oh, thank you. Memories. That's not what I called the thing. No, I. You know, I. You always say that. Don't plug my book. But I. But I, first of all, it's memories from your movies. Uh, and you know what it reminded me of, and don't take this the wrong way. It kind of reminded me of Art Spiegelman's Mouse. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is, a, it's, uh, admittedly, that's about the Holocaust, so it's probably not the best. No, it's not the best. <laughs> but it's a it's a graphic novel, I guess. Is and yeah, and kind of. Let's put it this way: about half of it. Is memories my memories of the movies, and I explained the title. Number one is walking is the uh, 
uh, is on the call sheet when you get it in the morning. Like the so-called star is number one, and then the second star is number two and number three. So when they're on the walkie-talkie and you're about to go to the set, they'll say number one is walking. And when I first started hearing that, I thought, oh, that's embarrassing. Number one is walking. And then as movies go along, you know, hearing, hey, number one is walking, number one is walking, blah, blah, blah. And then I did uh, the movie with uh, It's Complicated with Meryl Streep and Alec Baldwin, and I heard, number three is walking. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry, Harry, you know, encapsulates this perfectly with your look. He's gotten very good at drawing you, Steve. Perfect, perfect drawing. Yeah. <laughs> He's really uh, talented. And by the way, that was a great movie. You were number one in my book on that movie. You were fantastic uh, in, that, in that movie. Now, let's get to my very important question. All right. Question. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm not going to go over the calendar issue. Uh, the calendar issue is my nemesis. <laughs> uh, it's been ever since uh, online calendars uh, have been in existence. Uh, you know, and, and for five years, I thought, I must be missing something. <laughs> now, now you have to explain yeah. what it is because you, I know because you've been asking me this for as long as I've known you. But yeah, the, <laughs> I do see other people complain about it. But in most calendars, if you put in, if you have a, uh, let's say I'm having lunch with Leo at uh, noon in Petaluma, but I'm in New York, so I enter it in my New York calendar, uh, or my calendar, and it just says, I'm having lunch with Leo at noon. And then when I get to California, it says nine. <laughs> <laughs> Which explains you at nine. why I've never People seen say, you at lunch. Oh, you always are late yeah, or early. I'm always early. <laughs> but I, and then I go online and say, what's the fix? I say, oh, it's so easy. You just say, don't uh, do a time zone change. You say, well, you trust the time zone you're in or you trust the iPad time zone. And then you realize, well, whatever you pick, it's always wrong somewhere. It's either wrong when you're in New York, for example, or it's wrong when you're in. I'm not going to go there. But I found an app that I use, and, it, and I asked them before I signed on, because it's a monthly thing. I say, are you going to have change this feature to time zone coverage? They go, nope. And then I said, I'm sticking with you. Apple, I hope Apple's listening. Apple, you need a switch. You could call it the Steve Martin switch, because there's yeah, many people Google that would want this. Or Google Calendar, where you just go, somebody change that time. Don't change my lunch to nine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and don't, when I'm in New York, don't show me that it's three. Yeah. Anyway. What's your other question? Because okay. we can't help you with that one. Uh, right, Micah? This okay. is true. I, know, no, I tried. I, I promise I tried. I, I couldn't figure okay. out anything. Yeah. I have two, two questions and a complaint. Is that too many? No, no. Okay. My complaint is, and I hear other people say this, you get an email. And then you, you know, whatever, you, you read it, and you say, oh, now where's that email? And then you search, and it is gone. <laughs> Every other email on uh, either side of it is there, but the one you want is gone. And I've heard other people say this. It's magic. It's, uh, you know, it's out of Shakespeare. <laughs> you know, it's stirring pots of evil. Now, but I'm going to let that one go. Here's my question. When I'm on my iPad in iOS and I get an email from someone I don't know, I mean, someone I know, but I don't have their email, and then I tap on their email and, I, and they say, save to contacts. Mm -hmm. And it saves it to contacts. But on my contacts app, on my iPad, it is not there. Mm -hmm. It saves it to the iCloud. It saves it to iCloud. Mm -hmm. But it does not save it to my contacts app. Oh, this is good yeah. additional information now. That yeah. Is, yeah, that is good to know that it went uh, into iCloud. So what this is sounding yeah. like to me, Steve, uh, this is Micah, by the way, um, is that this is actually... I, I think a, you should call him Mr. Uh, oh, Mr. Martin. Martin. I believe uh, excuse so. Me. No, no, that's Mr. Not Martin. Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve, uh, what this is yeah. sounding like is a, a problem that I, a lot of people do have, and that is uh, a settings issue. So in the settings app, there is a section for contacts. And when you tap on contacts underneath yeah. this section, you will see an option called default account. And Ooh. default account lets you choose where, by default, the contacts app is saving new contacts that you create. And okay. if you have it set to uh, save to iCloud or save to whatever other email uh, services you might have logged in, then it's likely that the email program, the mail app, 
is saving that contact to one of those places. And then when you go back into the contacts app, uh, either on your iPad, your iPhone, wherever you happen to be, you will notice that there is an option for lists and the lists section shows you all of the different places that a contact can be. It can be in your iCloud account. It can be in your, uh, I have a Twit account, for example, or there's the option for all contacts. And what I'm okay, thinking. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm looking at the contacts app mm -hmm. and you're saying lists. I'm not seeing anything. Uh, I'm seeing, I'm on my I, iOS contacts. Uh-huh. And now I could press, I could press all iCloud. Maybe that's it. Yeah. So you do see the the section where it says iCloud, and then it says all iCloud. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So when you tap on that, then this should give you kind of the full uh, contacts that you have in your in your iPad or in your oh. phone or wherever it happens to be. And okay, I just did that. Okay. And here's let me tell you what happened. I just did that, uh -oh. and it and it changed. My lunch with Leo. <laughs> oh no! Now it's. Hey, I think you just fixed it. I think you just Woo! Fixed it. Thank now, you, Steve. You said he had a second question. Can you hang on for a couple of minutes, and we'll do that after yeah, the break. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, Steve Martin. I'm sorry, Charles Hayden Savage, Mr. Steve yeah, thank you. from <laughs> Mr. Savage, <laughs> or better known as Brazos. We'll continue in just a bit. Leo right. Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys. Thank you for letting me hold you over. I, oh, I don't mind. Oh, I really hey. appreciate it. Well, we're still, you're still recording. This is now the podcast. Yeah, right? it's the podcast. Wow, yeah. look, he's like a producer on the show. Oh, he, he knows well, I have a question for you. Yeah. Because I'm ashamed to ask you this on the air. Good. Only, uh, yeah, privately. <laughs> Just between you and I me. I have a, yeah. I have a, a, a Venmo account, which I almost never use. All right. I've used it a couple of times, three or four times. And I thought, oh, I'll log in the other day. So I log in. And I said, I, you know, I said, I, I paid my barber. I hate, you know, anyway, paid my wife something. And then I get an email from a woman and it says, um, it says. Send me money. I, it's exactly. It says. Can you send this back? I sent it to the wrong person. Please no, and no. thanks. That's a scam. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was $35. Yeah. But here's here's the thing. On my uh in, in the account it says she sent me $35. Okay, so here's by the way, you didn't you you've done like dirty rotten scandalers, you've done these kind of con games. This is a well-known con game where they say they've sent you money and then you send them the money, and they retract the initial sending, and they've made thirty-five bucks. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, and this happened. This is the Nigerian scam, Nigerian prince scam. Can I return? Uh, yeah, but they have I control. Money, could I resend the money I sent? I mean, uh, can could you get your money back? That's oh, a good question. Yeah. I. That's an interesting question. I'm guessing they figure you won't. You probably. But you won't notice until the time has passed that you could. That you could, yeah. And it, it depends on if they take that money out of their Venmo and put it somewhere else. That makes it a little more difficult to rescind the money. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So as long as it's still well, in it the system. Here, uh, Go ahead. Uh, under this thing, it says transfer money. And above it, it says $35 in Venmo. I don't keep any money in Venmo. Right. So here is this $35. Right. There is, it's not really there. You have a couple of options there. You can either just ignore it and wait until it goes away, uh, which is the, something that I've done in the past. They do this to me. I use the cash app for this. Um, and the other option is to reach out to support. And of course, we love to talk to support and tell them, hey, you know, th this is probably so a scam. Usually the way it? this works is they've used a, a, a phony credit card or some sort of false payment system. Mm-hmm. So, mm -hmm. so they're not retracting it, but the company that the credit card company will say, "Hey, wait a minute," and and you, they'll have your money, but you won't have any money. Oh, and the other tip, uh, yeah. Steve, uh, yeah. Mr. Steve, <laughs> is to tap on uh, the their name or their little profile icon, and yeah, you, okay, and then up in the top right there are the three dots 
for like more. Yeah. And if you tap block, that will keep them from doing that in the future. So I do that anytime okay, I get well, one of these scam ones, I block anyone that it's comes It's really in. common now, unfortunately. It's kind of sad. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, but I looked at her mm. list and there's only, she's made and had her list of transactions and they're all like very legit looking like, but she's, pr issues, she, tea. yeah, yeah. These guys are pretty sure. good at covering their tracks. It's not real. I, I, you know, you didn't send her the money. I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, believe you. Yeah. yeah. All right. As long I'll, as I'll, you don't... There's a, a good article on Motley Fool, which uh, somebody in the chat room gave us. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, okay. it's a common scam. Yeah. And as long as you don't move the money out of there, then, uh, she will be able, they will be able to get that money back anyway. Uh, you, it only goes against the terms of service if you take money that you know is not yours and use it for something else. Did you, uh, on this uh, Harry Bliss book, did you write the captions and he did the comic, or is it kind of mutual? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm the writer, and Harry is the director, the cinematographer, the costumer, <laughs> the lighting guy. They're so caterer. funny. Yeah, he does everything else. There's... And I, do all, I come up with the idea, or sometimes he'll send me a drawing, and I will write it. I recognize, you know, your like why Euclid has no friends. That's you in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, there's one in there you might you might like. It's the two little girls, and one is selling lemonade. Yes. <laughs> for fifty cents. Yeah. And 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 she has nobody in front of her stand, and the girl next little girl next to her is <laughs> has a sign that says. Buy my data, twenty dollars. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, the Tech Guy Show. Steve Martin is uh, on the line with us. Steve, this is a special time of year for Steve Martin fans because planes, trains, and automobiles is kind of a must-watch uh, this week. Uh, you talk a little bit about this, and number one is walking your new book with Harry Bliss about how. Uh, what a joy it was working with John Candy and what a sweet it was. Guy John he Candy was. and John Hughes both. It yeah, was great. Yeah. And so I know you have a lot of people who have important questions, so I'll ask my last question. Okay. All right. Your last question. And Michael, you can this will be your department. All right, stretching. I'm if ready. I, I have some shortcuts. <gasps> wow. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, this yeah. guy's good. But look at okay. To to send uh, like an email. So I have a little shortcut to send an email, let's say, to my wife. Mm -hmm. So I press the email button. It comes up, and there's the email thing. And I might write and say, oh, wait, what time was that appointment? And if I go to my calendar, that email disappears. Everything I've written is gone. Mm -hmm. I it's hate not that. like when you're on your, in your mail app, and it sort of remains in drafts or something. It's gone. Oh. I'm wondering, where does it go? I see. Yes. So because of the way that the Shortcuts app is doing it, where it's just presenting this screen where you can kind of type in an email, then when you switch windows to get what you need, by the time you get back, that window's no longer there versus if it opened up the mail app and then opened up to create a new email. I am wondering, Mr. Steve, if there isn't an action um, in shortcuts to, to save, keep that window open or to, well, no, but instead to, instead of popping up a dialogue, actually going to the mail app oh. and doing a compose from there. Yeah. Um, I'm looking now to see that Steve, we have a it. great show. Micah hosts with Rosemary Orchard, who is a shortcuts whiz called iOS today. Mm. Um, that's a podcast you can get on the a network, but I, and I bet you that they could do a little something to help you on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Because oh, that, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. But you know, also when I, I, I downloaded, uh, upgraded the, the iPad and had to start from scratch and those, those shortcuts, I had to like recreate them all over again. It was a big Oh night. no. Anyway, that's enough. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Well, <laughs> if Leo has your email, I do. Um, he'll pass it along to me and we are going to create you a shortcut that solves your problem. We will send you a shortcut. We will send it to you. and you. Actually, if you right want to send me your shortcut, Steve, well, then I'll send that to them and then they can modify it. Yep. We'd love to help oh, you. So you're like the, you're like the Venmo. <laughs> Just send me 35 bucks, Steve. That's all I ask. <laughs> ask me to send you my shortcuts. Sure. <laughs> Steve, you are, I would say, literally one of the most beloved people uh, in the world. And it's such an honor to, I'm almost in tears to have you uh, announce yeah, you. my retirement. We uh, met thanks to this radio show. 
uh, one of many great things that came to me uh, uh, mm-hmm. from doing this show for 19 years. I'm just, I'm incredibly grateful that you could join us today. Thank you, Steve. Well, we are all grateful for you. So thanks for having me on. And Thank I'll you. I'll email you my, uh, sh- one of my shortcuts. And we, and we can't wait uh, for the next season of Only Murders in the Building. Awesome oh, show. Okay, great. Yep. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Steve. Take care. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Charles uh, Savage Hayden. I'm Charles Hayden Savage. <laughs> Apartment 14C, the Arconia. Uh, yeah, just to fill flesh Please. out the details of what Steve <laughs> everyone's blurted out. out. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, December 18th will be the last Tech Guy show on the radio. Next hour, and I'm not going to leave some surprise. Next hour, the new host will join you. So we, uh, the show will continue on. You're going to get to keep hearing it on your stations. Many more, I hope, once I'm gone. Uh, I will, Mike and I will continue to podcast. Of course, we do a whole podcast network. And in a way, I'm not really retiring because I I love doing what we do. Yeah. It's great. So we are going to take the tech guy, turn it into a podcast called Ask the Tech Guy. I tried to get an S on there, but it was too expensive. The artists, I, yeah, it was like so an it's, extra it's really Ask the Tech Guys yeah. because all of the people that you hear on this show, including Micah, uh, Scott Wilkinson, Johnny Jett, Dick D. Bartolo. Uh, all of our experts will come on from time to time. We're going to do interviews, but most importantly, we'll be answering calls. That'll be Sundays in the same time period, and it's internet only, not not broadcast. So we're gonna we're gonna keep doing that. I'm not retiring from podcasting's not really work. Uh, I don't even have to show up on time. Plus, I, I miss brunch, uh, and it's been 19 years. But is brunch at 9 or noon? <laughs> Maybe that's why I've been missing it. It's been uh, I've been doing this show. I've been in radio 46 years, but I've been doing this show for almost half that time. 19 years. Wow. Uh, it'll be 19 years next month. Thanks so much uh, to Robin Bertolucci, the program director at KFI, who called me in 2004 and said, would you like to do a radio show? And I said, would I? <laughs> I started in radio in college, and I... Love this medium more than any other. Thank you, Robin. And then, of course, to the great folks, uh, Craig Kitchen and uh, my current boss, Julie Talbot, at uh, the Premier Radio Networks, who syndicate the show nationwide. Thanks to every single program director all across the country who put this show on the air. Good news for you, guys and gals. The show is going to continue with a great host. A great host. So no final goodbyes. Don't say goodbye on the on the calls. I want to answer your calls. Last day, December 18th. More details to come. Stay tuned. Our show today brought to you by, as always, quite literally brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. How can it be that this show is brought to you every day by Cashfly? Because Cashfly is our content delivery network. So every time you go to the website and download a show, every time you use your podcast application and download a show, you're getting it from Cashfly. The CDN. What a difference Cashfly has made to us, uh, frankly. Uh, without them, I, I honestly, uh, I don't think we'd be doing what we're doing. We came this close to just, you know, collapsing about 10, 15 years ago. Matt Levine of Cashfly called us and said, hey, we can help. And they've been doing so ever since. Now Cashfly's got a new thing, which I think is fantastic, called Ultra Low Latency Video Streaming. This is not that unreliable WebRTC many people use. It's a live video workflow using WebSockets, scales to millions of users with latency below one second. And you can get this up and running almost instantaneously. Cashfly's ultra-low latency video streaming. It's truly amazing. And because Cashfly has points of presence, servers all over the world, more than 50 of them, your customers your listeners, your viewers, your players are always getting the content from a server near them. And that makes a huge difference It's in terms of speed and availability. There's nothing like Cashfly. Cashfly can also help you reduce your origin server bills, your S3 bills with their storage optimization system. 100% cash hit ratio because you're already storing everything on Cashfly's servers. We've been using that for I think since we started, but now they actually offer it as a feature. I think we were just <laughs> piggybacking on them. Uh, but we always, when we're done with uh, editing a show like this, we put it up on Cashfly immediately. So that way, everything comes from Cashfly. They don't have to go out and download it from an origin server and then present it to you, which means it's always speedy, it's always fast. Of course, we use Cashfly's fully managed CDN solutions. 
and you should too. Their elite managed packages give you VIP treatment, 24-7 support, response times less than an hour. They are the best. And man, their techs are so good. We've never had a problem with Cashfly. So sometimes just call them to say hi, but they really are great. So what do you get? You get ultra low latency video streaming for more than a million concurrent users. You get lightning fast gaming, which delivers downloads faster with zero lag, glitches or outages. You get mobile content optimization for your website, automatic and simple image optimization. So your site loads faster on any device. You get multiple CDNs for redundancy and failover. That means they're intelligently balancing your traffic across multiple providers so you get the shortest routes and it mitigates against performance glitches. And what does this mean? Bottom line, Cashfly is 10 times faster than traditional methods, the way we were originally getting these podcasts to you. They're on six continents. They're 30 times faster than other major CDNs with a 98% cash hit ratio. And in the last 12 months, 100% availability. Perfect uptime. That's pretty impressive. Best of all, Cashfly has 24-7, 365 priority support, so you know they'll always be there when you need them. Learn more at Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Cashfly dot com. Thank you, Cashfly. Now back to the show. December 18th is the last uh, show. Mike and I, no, Mike, I'll be on the 17th, and then it'll be me all alone on the 18th. Oh. And then because the following week is Christmas Eve and Christmas, and then New Year's Eve and New Year's, there'll be best ofs and reruns and stuff. And then the new host will be January 4th. Uh, that person will start, uh, I'm sorry, January 3rd. is No, the 4th. Let me, let me get my calendar out. Uh, I'm sorry, January 7th and 8th will be the beginning of a new show with a new name, by the way. Yeah, a new name. Because we're keeping the tech guy name. <laughs> That's my name, baby. I'm the tech. 19 years, I think, possession is... Uh... So, uh, Denmos, we have, uh, we've, we've spoken to Dick and we've explained this studio will be dark on Saturdays. Uh, that's one of the reasons that we're doing this. It's a cost savings for us. Uh, every hour of studio time is about a thousand bucks. So, uh, we're going to be dark on Saturday, but Dick will start doing the show, the Giz Fizz on Wednesdays, right after this week in Google. So we will continue on with the Giz Fizz. And yeah, Lisa's in club twit, uh, talking, which is great, which is great. Thank you, Lisa, my love. That was really fun. Yeah, it was. Isn't he great? Yes. He is like the most genuinely sweet, decent, per normal person you've ever you'll ever meet. Yeah. And also relatively techy. He's writing shortcuts. <laughs> so, and just uh, it was my decision, not Premier's decision. Um, yeah, I think I'm 60, it's good 66 it out. in two weeks. Um, I didn't, uh, I should probably say this on the air. I don't want them to anybody to feel bad. Well, I'll say it when we talk with the new host next hour. Johnny, you're next. Is Johnny there? He's in the chat. Come on, Johnny. Yeah, there will be a post. I will blog it. Uh, we'll put it everywhere. I know, Dr. Mom. And you haven't retired, have you? But you did move to San Diego to be with your grandkids, so. Yeah, my contract, um, when we did the first deal, it was three years, three years, three years. And then the last couple of years, it's been year to year. At the end of every year, I can, either one of us can make a choice. Around July, I called them and said, look, you know, I'm too old for this. <laughs> I just want to do podcasts. I like podcasts. Uh, radio, believe it or not, stressful. I wake up every uh, morning before the radio show and I <laughs> not in my stomach. It's stressful. Um, it's a lot of pressure, so I'm kind of looking forward to just relaxing with Micah and having fun. Yes, exactly. It can be exactly. more fun, right? Hey, Johnny. Hey. You thought, thought you weren't going to be on, huh? That I was going to preempt no. you? I thought I was already on, and I, you know, oh, Steve you Martin got, uh, got me all <laughs> he flustered. He confused you, huh? <laughs> all right, here we go. He's been everywhere, man. He's Johnny Jett, the traveling guru. Travels all around the world, except he's not coming to the Bay Area this week. I'm sorry. I was looking forward to seeing you in studio, Johnny. But uh, I know. Yeah. Our flight was this morning, and my wife's sick. or Aww. She's feeling better now. But she's, she's feeling better? Good. All right. She's definitely feeling better, but yeah. she's still sick. No, you don't want to travel. Nasty cough. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, 
So he let the uh, cat out of the bag, huh? Yeah, yeah. You knew. I, I let, I let all our uh, guest uh, hosts um, know a, a couple of weeks ago. But uh, yeah, Mr. Martin uh, let the cat out of the bag. Well, it, ma it makes it easier for me because I'm every week I'm like, do not say. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's telling yourself in your head but over and over. <laughs> as as I mentioned, we're you know we're going to do a podcast. It'll be called Ask the Tech Guy, and uh, you will be a part of it as will all of our hosts. We can't get you all on because there's six of you and it's only going to be a couple hour show so uh when we get travel questions uh you're going to obviously going to be the first I'm person i'm always happy to first person i'm in johnnyjet.com uh there was a lot of travel news uh this week i i saw a lot of stories i want to ask you about but let me just hear you, it. you well okay i was going to let you start no i i, I like to hear it um, okay, I was going to let you <laughs> no start because I don't have it right in front okay, of Okay, well, I, I'm happy to start. So what am I... What, actually, I just sent a tip today. Actually, by the way, I've never... I rarely ever quote movies in my travel newsletter. Oh, I have a daily, that's I have a a daily great travel quote. tip. I saw and that today, in the chat yes. I just put that one from Steve Martin, who played Neil in Planes, Trains, Automobiles. That was the first time I ever quoted that in my newsletter as my quote of the day, travel quote of the day. You didn't even know so Steve was going to be on the show. I had no idea. Oh, Come on, so funny. Sh wow. Should we read it out loud? Sure. I didn't even recognize his voice when I was when when I was on hold. How am so. I supposed to go with the flow when the rental car agency leaves me in a 100 acre parking lot with keys to a car that isn't there, and then I have to hike back three miles to find out they don't have any more cars? Yeah, that's the best scene. That that's my audition, Steve. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Can I be in the remake? I'll be the John Candy, though. I think. Uh, oh. Yeah, classic. Classic, right? That yeah. is the the Thanksgiving movie, but also the travel movie. Definitely. My wife last night said we need to watch Planes, Trains, oh, every year. This week. Every Definitely. year. Yeah. It's so, a it's a traditional. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, you gotta watch it. Yeah. Um it's gonna be busy this year. So AAA came out last week or this week, said, you know, there's gonna be fifty four million people, fifty four point six million people hitting the road. Uh, they're gonna travel at least fifty miles or more from home which is an increase from last year. They say it's only a 1.5, which is surprising. I thought it'd be more than that. I should have but had Steve say, those aren't pillows. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just thought I, of that. I should have asked him. I, <laughs> I, I also, actually, I have a I have it lined up for a quote for tomorrow, which you can't say on the radio because there's a lot of F-bombs Don't say it. There. Don't say it. I no, actually, um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I, I, uh, Steve and I were going to uh, dinner once and uh, we're walking down the street and I felt so bad for the guy because... Everybody goes, it's Steve Martin. And then they go, excuse me. Oh, and boy. it must be so hard. So That's I wasn't awesome. going to ask him to do that. I, you know, he's very shy, actually. Go uh, ahead. I'm what? sorry. I'm sorry. No, I, listen, <laughs> I, I remember, I remember you telling me that you guys had dinner one night and you, he, you had a travel question. He said, ask Johnny Jett. I was shocked that he knew who I was. <laughs> he does. So, he listens. Yeah. That, that, That's that nice. Makes my, makes That's nice. my day. But so uh, go ahead. Anyway, there's going to be a lot of people traveling. It's supposed to be the third busiest um, travel Thanksgiving ever since they've been recording it. And that is normally the, like the second biggest travel day of the year, right? No, no, it's always actually the Wednesday before and the Sunday after the Sunday after Thanksgiving is usually the busiest and the Wednesday of before all of is the second of, wow. all, of the whole year. So this is going to be the busiest in years of the busiest day of the year. Yeah, we'll see. 2.4 million people went through uh, TSA checkpoints yesterday in, in uh, 2019, pre-pandemic, it was 2.5. So we're there, but I think because so many people are working remote, I think you're going to see, I don't know if we're going to break the record this this week like we did uh, in 2019, but I think it'll be close. But I think people are traveling already. I think they're already getting ready to go to their destination for Thanksgiving. Wow. So, but if you are traveling, I do have some tips. Um, you know, give yourself plenty of extra time. You have to because you know, the airlines are only flying like 85 to 90% of their fleet. So the f there's as many people, almost as many people as 2019, and the planes are going to be packed. If you miss that flight, you could be stuck for days depending on your destination. So get there early. You know, parking lots at the airport are going to be full. You make your reservations online. You can actually usually get a deal at uh, some of these airports if you do it in advance. So book it. Um, you know, obviously pack snacks, always stay hydrated, bring a, bring a bottle of water, empty bottle. There's going to be security. a big storm right around Thanksgiving this year. So this it, might be, is a, there, yeah. is there going to be? Cause um, I didn't, I haven't looked at the weather. Cross country storm. I'm looking at AccuWeather cross country oh, storm to threaten travel headaches 
around Thanksgiving, developing storm system. It looks like on mostly on the east coast. Well, that will mess everything up. One uh, storm just throws it all off. Storms Last in the year, Pacific we got lucky, Northwest no with rain and mountain snow on Tuesday. Seattle and lower elevations in western Washington will face the brunt of the storm's rain. So you get that. And then you're going to have a big storm, uh, kind of Florida, Atlanta area. It's just, it's not going to be great. It's uh, wow. thunderstorms, Lake Charles yeah. in New Orleans, Louisiana, Jackson, Mississippi, Minnesota, Minneapolis. Well, pack your patience. Yeah. That's another tip. Make sure you pack your patience. And Buffalo. If you go to Buffalo this time of year, you know what to expect. <laughs> I mean, right? they got five feet of snow right now. Yeah. Five feet. <sighs> um, and it doesn't also, go away, right? It stays all winter. So, yeesh. well, I just FaceTimed with my uh, family in Toronto and they had snow last night, but it's already melting. So, yeah. It, 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 it might not be there Toronto, that like a lot of big cities, I think it's the warmth of the city because you get out of town and it stays. But this, but the city, the sidewalks, the buildings—they're warm. It's, right. You, you don't usually get a lot of accumulation in the cities. It depends. Yeah. They don't. It usually doesn't last long. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And if it does, it turns brown and it's nasty. That's when you're like, get me to Florida or California. <laughs> or Arizona. Are, are you for traveling me. for uh, the holidays? Well, we were we were supposed to leave today. Yeah. But, um, so, so now you're stay home the whole the whole time, huh? I might go pop in and see my dad this week. Next year, this time, we're going to Las Vegas for the Formula One race. During Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. 16th through the 19th. It's the week before Thanksgiving, I think. Uh, but it's uh, it's going to be crazy. But, uh, you know, those, those races attract hundreds of thousands of people. The Bellagio is building grandstands over the water by the fountains, right in front of the fountains on the Strip. And I got tickets, baby. Woo -woo -woo. I, 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 Good for you. I, I'd love to see it. Uh, I'll by send the way, you what, pictures. <laughs> what was your travel news that you wanted to talk about? I forgot, and I can't find it now. I've been looking for it this whole okay. time. I, you know, I'm thinking because you know, all week long I look at news, and I'm thinking, oh, I got to ask Johnny about this. But then, I, you know, I don't write it down or anything, and now I, I have, I don't know what I was going to ask you. <laughs> well, <laughs> if people don't, aren't sure what they should bring through uh, security, ask the TSA. They're great on Twitter. Their handle is Ask TSA. You can ask them anything during normal business hours. They'll reply usually within 10 minutes. You yeah. can bring those gooey K uh, pies, so bring them through. <laughs> bring they them won't make through. you dig through your pecan pie? No, they're like, hey, you know, is there something <laughs> They won't make you they'll, eat they'll, a they'll, slice? They'll put it through the metal detector, but you can. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So anyway, you'll, uh, I guess you're not traveling. Um, oh, was No, I, not this year. Was no. it the person who got the uh, box cutter through was no, that but that's, wasn't, that wasn't that, in a pie but no I've no no, no, no. That, i was know, trying to think if that I've, was leo's I've seen, that wasn't but i've seen a number of stories like this and maybe it was you who told me johnny the tsa is used to seeing things like water bottles they always catch the water bottle because they see so many of them but they see so few weapons that their their pattern recognition isn't really up to speed so uh, sometimes they go through because they're not expecting it they know they're going to see I, water bottles if you go to the TSA's handle on Instagram, they yeah. do a great job with what, what's being reported. Like, I think it was today. Someone tried to go through with a knife inside their laptop. Don't. That was underneath the keyboard. Stop it. Don't do it. JohnnyJet.com. Get his newsletter. Follow him on Twitter and Instagram. Listen to him right here. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you. Bzzz. Uh, so was Steve supposed to mention it or is it yeah. just, he just, so the fir uh, first, he emailed me, this is the story. First he emailed me uh, and I said, well, you know, the last show is gonna be December 18th. So come on sometime. I'd love to plug your book. And he said, okay, well I'll be on Saturday. And I said, he said, can I say anything? I said, no, 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 it's, it's top secret. Cause the one thing I don't want is a lot of calls from people saying, we're going to miss right. you. So, uh, and I hadn't planned to say anything until December 18th, but shortly after I got that email from him, I got an email from premier saying, this is the press release we're putting out on Monday. Can you give us a wow. quote? And I said, huh? and they said, well, we'll hold off if you want, but we've got to start telling the stations and sponsors, uh, you know, sooner than later. So it's going to leak out probably. Uh, and, and plus we're have the, my, uh, successor is going to be on next hour. And and so it's just going to become more and more apparent. 
so I, I wrote to Steve. I said, Steve, would you do me a favor and would you make the announcement? Because that's the best way, better than me doing it. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. Yeah. It was pretty sweet of him. As he's, I'm really honored. I, you know, I thought I'd kind of lost track of him. And then he sent me the book. And he said, the scientist said, hey, Leo, I miss talking to you, Steve. And I thought, well, I'm calling him. <laughs> That's how we met many years ago. He DM'd me on Twitter. I should tell this story on the air. He DM'd me on Twitter and said, you don't have to respond to this, but I'm a big fan. And I said, yeah, I'm not going to respond to Steve Martin saying right. I'm a big fan. I was going to ask him, but I thought, you know, he doesn't like to uh, get political or controversial at all. I was going to ask him, are you going to stay on Twitter? What are you going to do? Because he's one of the, and he even wrote a book with his tweets but he's of late been less on Steve Martin to go. He's only tweeting a little bit. But he, for a couple of years, he was the funniest guy on Twitter. He was awesome. He was, yeah. Was amazing. I remember he, put, he, he put like a sign up or something so, oh, on his head. So I can't funny. remember what it was, but it was funny. So funny. Yeah. Um, anyway. <sighs> anyway, uh, thank you, John. You got uh, three more episodes or something like that. All right, three I'm more. Not, who's counting? And, and, and I kept the secret. I only told my wife. I was just about to tell my cousin, Artie. I said, you're going to have to swear. You can't tell anybody. And you can now oh. tell the world it's out. <laughs> Press now, release man. going out on Monday. Let's see. You'll yeah. be on. We are doing a show Saturday, next Saturday, despite Thanksgiving. The 3rd, the 10th, and the 17th. So there's four more. Okay, good. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll be there. Thank you, John. Take care. See you, Thank Micah. You. Always Bye. a pleasure. Good to See talk you. to you. Bye-bye. Is he on the Instagram? Yeah. He, you know, he was, I, you know, actually I should look and see what, I should have asked him. I didn't want to ask him on the air. Yeah, for folks that are asking, <laughs> I just, I had a, a accident with a handsaw. It's no big deal. Oh, thing. I didn't see. People keep going. What's wrong with you, Mike? With a handsaw? Yeah, I was saying I was sawing with a handsaw, and when it got through what I was working on, it went to the ground and then bounced up, and it hit my knuckle. <sighs> wow! And so my knuckle just split open. Wow! Yeah, I'm okay. He's actually doing a lot of interviews. I see for the book. <laughs> he was on the View. I know, Dr. Mom, and I usually do. And it literally, it was this moment of, ah, oh, I need to run you know, back upstairs so and get my gloves, and I didn't do it, and I should have. Because I ran into our, uh, the guy who did the whole studios, and he had a big cast, and I said, yeah, it's just, at my age, I shouldn't be using blade saws, or table, whatever. Is this Snoopy? It sure sounds like it, doesn't it? I do you think it's kind of sad that Apple bought the rights to all the Snoopy? I, a thousand percent, I find that you know the, awful. It's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, and all of those. And for the last few years, they've allowed uh, public broadcasting to air them. Uh, you know, so people could still see them if mm -hmm. they didn't have an Apple TV Plus account. And now they're not. Doing yeah, now the way you have to do it is you have to download Apple TV Plus, and there's and and you can do it for free for at a certain time to watch those. Charlie Brown specials. Don't like that. I don't either. I feel like that's part of our, almost it, our cultural heritage. I, yes. For so many generations, too. Yeah. So, uh, Charlie Brown uh, Christmas is not going to be on PBS. You can stream it, and this is just, you know, let's face it, this is a marketing thing. You can download the Apple TV Plus app and stream it for free December 22nd through the 25th. Let me see the great pumpkin. They're going to do the same thing. Um, let me see when they stream that October 28th through 31st so it's over oh well yeah I guess it's Halloween right so it makes sense the Great Pumpkin is not yeah, Thanksgiving yeah. it's uh, the, Halloween uh, Charlie Brown Thanksgiving is yeah. the next one yeah. uh, 8888 ask Leo a couple of questions coming in through uh, various uh, media like how did this happen what are we going to do now uh, my successor appears next hour. We'll talk, uh, and you'll hear what's going to happen to the radio show. It will continue on. That's the good news. Uh, I will continue doing podcasting, so I'm just retiring from radio, but that's a big deal. I've been doing this uh, since 1976, so it's a big deal. But I didn't want to be one of those radio guys who just kind of trails off to, <laughs> to nothing. <laughs> and I do love 
talking and I love talking to people. And so Micah and I will keep doing uh, an ask. It's going to be called Ask the Tech Guys. Really excited and about it. And we're going to keep too. doing that on Sundays as a podcast. If you're already subscribed to the Tech Guy podcast or you already go to techguylabs.com, uh, that's where it's going to appear. You don't have to do anything differently. Uh, you just, the big difference is you won't be able to tune it in on the radio. But you know what? This new guy, you're gonna, I'm, or person, I said it was a guy. I've given something away. Ooh. It's wonderful. And you're going to want to listen to this show. Uh, somebody asked, is it, was it your decision? Yes, I was not fired. <laughs> uh, it was totally my decision. I missed having uh, weekends, to be honest. I'm still going to work Sundays, but uh, at least I have Saturday. I'll be able to go to a brunch uh, and uh, that kind of thing. So, And you'll probably be happy because you don't have to come in here on Saturdays. Anymore. I like that. Yeah, it'll be Sunday. It's fun, though, isn't it, to talk to people? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let's do it. Um Ron is on the line from New Jersey. Hi, Ron. Did I press the right button? I did. Did I uh, turn him up? I did. Ron, are you there? Hello, Ron. You know, it's deadly quiet, which always makes me nervous. If you're on mute, unmute. All right, well, put him on hold here. I'll put him on hold. And we'll try John on the line from Moore Park, California. Are you there, John? Yeah, this is John. Hi, John. In Welcome. Moorpark. In Moore Park. Welcome. What can we do for you today? Well, you know, you recommended at one point. Uh, you said you didn't you you didn't like to use Facebook because it had all sorts of requirements. And I got invited to use TikTok, and I just wondered if, <laughs> if you had the same 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 provisos. About you know, it's TikTok funny because as, TikTok. Uh, yeah, TikTok gets a lot of heat from the government. Uh, and from there, there's an FCC commissioner who said we should ban TikTok because it's a social network owned by a Chinese company. And the fear is that the Chinese Communist Party uh, would somehow use it to, I don't know what, spy on you. <laughs> yeah. But at that point, I always point out, well, you know who's really spying on you? Everybody on the Internet, every app you have. Uh, exactly. You know, and the Facebook is the worst, right? They... But, but you should understand the way that all of these work, Google, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, they don't collect information about John and Moore Park and then sell it to data brokers. What they do is they collect information about you and keep it to themselves and then tell advertisers, hey, you know, we've got a bunch of people who live in this area who have this, you know, who are this age or whatever, and you can buy ads that they'll see. That's how Facebook makes money. So... Facebook knows a lot about you and continues to collect a lot about you. I guess the fear more is that they have that data. So if it if it leaks or they get a government request, they're going to have to hand that over. All these companies do a yearly transparency report. Meta is one of them, Facebook's owner, uh, where they tell you how many government requests they got. And it's usually it's not very many. Uh, and it's, you know, usually an investigation of a crime. Leaks are more concern and facebook has a history this is by the way when i left unfortunately of being leaky so for instance on facebook you ever do those quizzes you know which harry potter character are you i don't use facebook at all <laughs> good man good job <laughs> but many people do i did and you think oh that's fun you know i'm dumbledore but there's a kind of a nasty side effect to that the whole reason the people who create those quizzes couldn't care less which Harry Potter character you are. They are, by by you taking that quiz, now because they've become friend, a friend of yours, and they can spy not only on you, but friends of friends. Those are third parties. That late, late data is leaking out from Facebook. They have tried again and again to block it. Now, TikTok's a different matter. TikTok is like TV. All TikTok knows about you is, you know, what your phone lets it know about you. And that's very limited if you're on an iPhone. Mostly what they know about you and mostly what they care about is which videos you watch so they can give you more of that. Does that bother you from a privacy point of view, John? I, I just I just wondered uh, whether I should load uh, TikTok as an app or not. And that was my question. Yeah, it's harmless, in my opinion. Uh, I think a lot of the um, saber rattling is from people who are, don't like the Chinese government, I'm with them, and somehow are saying, well, we shouldn't use products from China, but your phone is made in China in most cases. Your laptops are made in China. Most of your home appliances are made in China. So if we really wanted to go on a China diet, it would be a tough, tough thing to do. 
There's no evidence that TikTok is spying on you particularly. There was a bug in their software. A lot of people bring this up. There was a bug in their software. And Apple, it's funny, people who use iPhones first noticed it, that Facebook, I'm sorry, TikTok, when you copied something to the clipboard, TikTok could see it. Mm -hmm. And Apple warned you. And so that's how people became aware of it. TikTok said, oh yeah, that's a bug. The reason is so you can copy a URL or some music or some text and paste it into the app when you're making a video. We won't do that anymore, and they don't. Uh, maybe the most kind of worrisome uh, accusation is that somehow the Chinese government could influence TikTok's algorithm to feed you propaganda. But frankly, we know they do that with Twitter and Facebook already and much more effectively. Uh, Russians, too. So, and I don't know how you're going to be um, propagandized by an app that shows people dancing and twerking and, <laughs> you know, doing, telling jokes and silly things. I, 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 I don't think there's evidence of that yeah. yet. Do you, you're, you, do you, you don't make TikToks. I don't make TikToks, but I do scroll through TikTok. And yeah, as long as it's, it's entertaining. being used to maintain that, I think that it's fine. I, I, you know, there were, was concern about because it's such an interesting app, an engaging app, then you did have uh, people in the military watching TikTok. Well, and that's appropriate. You know what? The military, the government should ban any app that could track your location. Exactly. Uh, inside the Pentagon, you don't want that. There are plenty of them. Strava, the running app, did that, and they mm -hmm. had to ban it. So that's that's different. That doesn't mean you and I shouldn't use it. Exactly. Huh? Uh, and you could turn off location permissions. Of course, we know Google, when even when you turn them off, keeps your location permissions. So it's, it's not just TikTok. It's, this is the world we live in nowadays. Do you care if TikTok knows where you are? I don't. I don't. Well, it's not I like do. they're going to aim a bomb at. I me. care if any app knows where I am, so I have location turned off on a lot of things. But that, that yeah, ultimately, like you're saying, there's another side that I really like to TikTok, much like YouTube. There are a lot of people, creative, talented people, who couldn't, without a lot of effort, get on TV, radio, get in the movies. Who create stuff on TikTok that's huge. My son is one of them. Yeah, and he has built a career as a TikTok chef. Couldn't happen anywhere else. So for that reason, I think it's great. Leo and Micah, your tech guys, more calls right after this. Why, well, hey, hey, how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy with Micah Sargent, your tech guy too. Howdy, howdy. Howdy. 8888 Ask Leo, the phone number if you want to talk high tech with us, 888-827-5536. A surprise guest coming up in a few minutes. Also Dick D. Bartolo, who is not surprising, but always interesting in about uh, 45 minutes meanwhile back to the phones we go i should mention techguylabs.com that's the website where all the information you hear on the show all the links uh will go we'll also put audio and video from the show after the fact and we will also put um a transcript so you can find what you're looking for and go right to that part of the audio or video tech it's free no sign up nothing we just give it away aren't we crazy tech guy labs Com. Now let's try Ron again in New Jersey, see if he unmuted. There he is. Hi, Ron. Yes, hi. <laughs> Welcome. Sorry, I let my headphones go on mute after a while. It happens. That's fine. And, I, you know, I can always tell because it's so quiet. I know that you're muted. So I just figured, well, we'll get you. We'll get you. Anyway, welcome. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm having trouble with Microsoft OneDrive. It's, I've always used it for Word documents and Excel spreadsheets, and this works fine so I can access them anywhere. But lately, it started taking over my photographs and just doing all sorts of crazy things. I'll come in from a photo walk or something and stick my SD drive in and start copying them over. And, it'll, and I can't use my laptop for 20 minutes because it's up, uh, up, uh, loading everything yeah. to OneDrive. And then I go through and I do my calls, get rid of half the pictures that I don't want, and it'll download them. And oh, <laughs> and no. Them back again. Yeah. It's doing you a favor. <laughs> it's protecting no, it's you. <laughs> and I I uh I installed uh, Luminar Neo and it downloaded 14,000 oh. photos in my catalog. Holy oh no. So do you yeah. use OneDrive at all? I do use it for Word and Excel documents and spreadsheets, right. but I've never used it for photographs. So OneDrive is Microsoft's uh you know, cloud storage, kind of like iCloud yeah. for Apple or Dropbox. And uh, a lot of people, if you have Office, sounds like you do, you get a terabyte of OneDrive. Uh, Office, yeah. by default, will save 
documents to OneDrive, not to your hard drive. All of this is is a cup for a couple of reasons. One, because people lose stuff, and so this is kind of a backup system that's automatic. You don't have to think about it. I think the other reason is that Microsoft eventually really wants everything to live in the cloud and wants to get you used to that. So, you know, and they push OneDrive on you. Boy, do they push it on you. When yeah, you first get yeah. Windows, they say, well, you haven't signed up. Log in. Turn it on. But you get a lot of storage uh, as part of your uh, office subscription. I think you need to go into the uh, the OneDrive settings and uh, tell it not to knock it off. Do you want your photos backed up to OneDrive? No, I back them up to Amazon Photos when I'm ready to, to okay. see them. Yeah. I put them up there myself. I don't want anything done automatically. OneDrive yeah. has a camera upload feature where it will do this automatically, but you can tell it, I don't want you to do this automatically. And it will turn, okay. it'll enable whenever it, it notices an SD card uh, or whenever you plug in a camera directly. Sometimes if you plug in certain smartphones, it will do that as well. Um, but it's, it should be as simple as in the OneDrive app on whatever platform you're using, you choose the menu, you go to settings and then find the setting that says camera upload and then turn it off to stop it from automatically yeah. uploading photos and videos. It's pretty darn annoying. I yeah, it is. I have it unchecked for uh, so usually if OneDrive runs on startup, which is almost always what you want, by the way, you don't have to have that behavior. Even if you want to use OneDrive, but you don't want to have it always doing stuff in the background you could just not have it start when you start your machine and, and start it manually but uh most people will want it to start manually if you've started it manually in the taskbar down there in the lower right there's a little puffy cloud right click on that go to settings uh in your network settings there's a checking uh, for, for onedrive there's a checkbox that says photos and videos you can uncheck that you i also uncheck screenshots i don't know why i'd want to save them on OneDrive. okay okay <laughs> Um, no, I don't. You you also can uh, limit the upload and download. So if you did want to, if you did want OneDrive to back up your photos, you can say, but don't do it so fast, so that you can get your laptop back. Mm -hmm. There's not as oh, you know. And then uh, when you're in that uh, not network, did I say network? I meant backup. When you're in that backup tab, uh, there's also a manage backup button, which lets you choose which folders are backed up. And you'll also want to stop backup on pictures if you don't want it to do anything with pictures. So there's a couple That's of exactly places. What I want. Yeah, there's a couple of places you need to change. All of that is in the settings in the backup tab. You want to uncheck photos and videos and then go into manage backup and make sure that your pictures yeah. folder is not being backed up. Probably all you want to be backed up is your documents folder. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You can even get more granular than that. Uh, you know, make it a folder within a folder, like just your office documents, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, by default, it'll back up documents, desktops, and pictures. And that's the behavior you didn't want it to do is the yeah. pictures. Yeah. So just turn it yeah, off. I, I've unchecked. I've unchecked some of that, but obviously there's something else I have to go dig in for. Yeah, you probably didn't look at manage folder backup. They hide it there. Manage folder backup. Yeah, manage backup. It's it's uh, also in those settings in the backup tab. It's not just that checkbox you have to do. You also have to click the manage backup and un okay. uh, remove pictures All as, right. as your backup. Okay? All right. Hey, yes. pleasure Thank talking you to you. Thanks for the call, Ron. Uh, Doug's on the line from Asheville, North Carolina. Hi, Doug. Hey, Leo. How are you? Well, I'm great. We're both great, Micah and I. How are you? Hi, Micah. Hello. We're good. We're good. Good. Glad um, to hear I've got a, I got a couple questions. The first one is, I hear you talk about paid email services. And so we'd like to do that because we're trying to be safer, but we have established email accounts that, you know, are all over. So we wouldn't be able to uh, track them all to, would we have to get a new email address? No. Uh, so if your email, let's say it's a Gmail, which is probably the number one address people have Leo at gmail.com. You can, if you sign up for an email provider, you have two choices. You could have Gmail forward it to them, or you can have the new email provider get your mail from Gmail, which is probably what I would do. And then everything ends up in one inbox. If you wish, you can even for, uh, filter your Gmail mail by saying, if it's to Leo at Gmail, put it in a special folder. So you have, you have absolutely the way to go get it. 
my preferred solution long term, and you probably don't want to do this, but if but if you're just if you were just starting out in life, would be to get a domain that's your family name or something, you know, your business name. And when you own a domain, you can have it send your email anywhere. It's like a, a forwarding number. And your domain will never, you know, my email, leo at leoville.com, will always send it to me because I'd say, you know, when I moved from Gmail, I just moved it to Fastmail. I just told it, leo at leoville, now go to Fastmail. Nobody knows the bet, knows the knows the wiser. Nobody's the wiser. It's uh, It does it automatically. So then you can have one email address your whole life. Uh, which is yeah. the ideal. But at this point, everybody has your old address. You know, you've been using it for a long right. time. So keep it, right. you know, if you if if you wanted to slowly, gradually move people over to the new system, uh, you know, hover.com. What program or, would you recommend? Well, it depends on how much you want to spend. Fastmail is the one I use. It's a little expensive compared to some of the others. There are a lot of other paid email services out there. The reason I like paid email services is, A, you're the customer, not the product. So they tend to track you less. You have somewhere yeah. you can call for support. Go ahead and try to call Gmail for support or Outlook Mail yeah. or Hotmail or <laughs> or Yahoo Mail or any, or, you know, if you're getting free email, they're not going to provide a lot of support. It's expensive. So, uh, right. but there are lots of other places. Hover, which is one of our sponsors, is a dom domain registrar. You can register a domain name there and have email there. And that's pretty cheap. I think it's five bucks, 10 bucks a year or something like that. It's pretty, pretty inexpensive. Oh. So shop around. We should at some point, Micah, put a list together of... I would like that. Of Because yeah. uh, uh, I, I say this and I, I really mean it. If you care about email, if it's important to you, especially as a business, pay for it. Pay for it because you're not going to get great service from uh, free companies. That that they, they're not there to give you great service. They're there to show you ads, mm -hmm. to 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 scrape your data. They're there to find out about you are the product, not the customer. Eighty eight eighty eight ask Leo. That's the phone number. Eight 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 two seven five five three six. Toll free from anywhere in the U S or Canada. A special mystery guest next on the Tech Guy Show. Interesting. Mm. Hey, everybody. Leo Laporte here. I am the founder and one of the hosts at the Twit Podcast Network. I want to talk to you a little bit about what we do here at Twit because I think it's unique. And I think for anybody who is uh, bringing a product or a service to a tech audience, you need to know about what we do here at Twit. We've built an amazing audience of engaged, intelligent, affluent listeners who listen to us and trust us when we recommend a product. Our mission statement is, Twit, is to build a highly engaged community of tech enthusiasts. Boy, already, you should be your ears should be perking up at that because highly engaged is good for you. Tech enthusiasts, if that's who you're looking for, this is the place. We do it by offering them the knowledge they need to understand and use technology in today's world. And I hear from our audience all the time, part of that knowledge comes from our advertisers. We are very careful. We pick advertisers with great products, great services, with integrity, and introduce them to our audience with authenticity uh, and genuine enthusiasm. And that makes our host red ads different from anything else you can buy. We are literally bringing you to the attention of our audience and giving you a big fat endorsement. We like to create partnerships with trusted brands, brands who are in it for the long run, long term partners that want to grow with us. And we have so many great success stories. Tim Broom, who founded IT Pro TV in 2013, started advertising with us on day one, has been with us ever since. He said, quote, we would not be where we are today without the Twit Network. I think the proof is in the pudding. Advertisers like IT Pro TV and Audible that have been with us for more than 10 years, they stick around because their ads work. And honestly, isn't that why you're buying advertising? You get a lot with Twit. We have a very full service attitude. We almost think of it as kind of artisanal uh, advertising, boutique advertising. You'll get a full service continuity team. People who are on the phone with you, who are in touch with you, who support you from with everything from copywriting to graphic design. So you are not alone in this. We embed our ads into the shows. They're not... They're not added later. They're 
part of the shows. In fact, often they're such a part of our shows that our other hosts will chime in on the ad saying, yeah, I love that. Or just the other day, <laughs> one of our hosts said, man, I really got to buy that. <laughs> That's an additional benefit to you because you're hearing people our audience trusts saying, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, we deliver, always over deliver on impressions. So you know you're going to get the impressions you expect. The ads are unique every time. We don't pre-record them and roll them in. We are genuinely doing those ads in the middle of the show. Uh, we'll give you great onboarding services. Ad tech with pod sites that's free for direct clients. Gives you a lot of reporting, gives you a great idea of how well your ads are working. You'll get courtesy commercials. You actually can take our ads and share them across social media and landing pages. That really extends the reach. There are other free goodies, too, including mentions in our weekly newsletter that's sent to thousands of fans, engaged fans who really want to see this stuff. We give you bonus ads and social media promotion, too. So if you want to be a long-term partner, introduce your product to a savvy, engaged tech audience. Visit twit.tv slash advertise. Check out those testimonials. Mark McCrary is the CEO of Authentic. You probably know him, one of the biggest uh, original podcast advertising companies. We've been with him for 16 years. Mark said the feedback from many advertisers over 16 years across a range of product categories everything from razors to computers, is that if ads and podcasts are going to work for a brand, they're going to work on Twitch shows. I'm very proud of what we do because it's honest, it's got integrity, it's authentic, and it really is a great introduction to our audience of your brand. Our listeners are smart, they're engaged, they're tech savvy, they're dedicated to our network, and that's one of the reasons... We only work with high integrity partners that we've personally and thoroughly vetted. I have absolute approval on everybody. If you've got a great product, I want to hear from you. Elevate your brand by reaching out today at advertise at twit.tv. Break out of the advertising norm. Grow your brand with host red ads on twit.tv. Visit twit.tv slash advertise for more details. Or you can email us advertise at twit.tv if you're ready to launch your campaign now. I can't wait to see your product. So give us a ring. Hey, mystery guest. <laughs> am I am I the mystery guest? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I well, what? I did was last hour uh, we announced that I was leaving, and oh, I you said, did. yeah, and I said, but stay tuned. Next hour, the show goes on. Our new host will be here. Oh wow! So you, so the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. Well, I yeah I mentioned <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't going to say anything. As you know, yeah, uh, because I didn't want to f field a thousand phone calls saying goodbye. Uh, but then I got a message from uh, Premier saying we're putting out the press release on Monday. Oh, so <laughs> you better. And I said, oh, well, well, I wasn't going to say anything until December eighteenth. I wanted, to, you know, kind of play it, downplay it. And they said, well, we could hold it off, but we're going to have to. We have to start uh, telling the affiliates and people, and it's going to leak out. And I said, because I had even said, you know, as soon as where, I have rich, who's going to leak it? <laughs> Well, <laughs> that's I don't know. As soon as I have Rich on, it's going to become obvious. Well, you know, some affiliate will put it in their newsletter or something. And anyway, uh, and I said, yeah, you're right. So we'll just we'll just uh, announce it. So I announced it last hour. I said the surprise guest this hour is the new host. Oh, my gosh. Now there's a lot of pressure, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. If you think there's pressure now, wait till January 10th, buddy boy. Should have done a better setup. <laughs> you, like one, you do one have the confetti sad cannons, frame right? in the background. That is pretty oh. pathetic. But this is a radio show. That's the yeah. beauty of it. I didn't think I'd be on. I signed up for radio, so I don't have to be on. <laughs> I'm on every day of the week. I don't. I, this is the week I don't want to. This is the day I don't want to shave. Oh, you know what I have to do for you? I have to create a lower third. Let me see. How Micah, how are you? I am doing well. How are you today? I'm good. Good. Copy. Getting getting ready to give up my weekends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to do uh, save and duplicate. There we go. So you'll be doing it uh, both Saturday and Sunday? No, just Saturday. Just Saturday. Oh, you're not doing a Sunday show? No. Oh, I, they didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not so bad. That's good. That Yeah, it's just the one day. Yeah. I thought you were going to be doing um, both days. Oh, um, that's good then. That's good. 
It's a little bit better because I yeah. am on five days a week at KTLA. Yeah. No, I, oh, I'm so, so oh, happy to wow. hear that. That's good. Hold on. I'm actually getting a call. Hang on. Let me, <laughs> Go ahead. This Get is off from, the show. This is from Robin. Hold on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Better talk to Robin. <laughs> Holy cow. She's the big boss. Um, we see you here. On... Uh, we don't want to say anything. Can you not say anything, Rich? Uh, oops. Oops. Is it Rich Capital D E R M and so intercapped, right? And then is it Rich on? Yes, Rich on. And I'll do Rich on tech.com and the new host of the show no i won't put that up. <laughs> that's kind of mean i won't do that so he's talking to robin so i uh i won't say anything <sighs> Is it is everything Deal, is, is everything deals okay? off? <laughs> deals off. Well, you want to do a Christmas? You're gift doing guide? Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my proposed lower third for you. Perfect. Richontech.com. Oh, richontech.tv. Oh, TV. Even better. I couldn't yeah. get the dot com. It's a some. Ass. It's um. It's uh, a, a, a Chinese company that That's it's rich on it's, it's rich on tech. Very rich. Oh, like, rich on tech. Do you yeah. have a rich on? Do you have a Twitter handle you want to promote? <laughs> Mastodon. Uh, are we using that anymore? <laughs> no, no. I don't. I I do Instagram. I Twitter. I'm at rich on tech. I mean, it's all. What's your uh, Insta? Oh, he's happy. It's he's all feeling rich glad. on tech. All right, here we go. It's the Tech Guy Show. Micah Sargent, Leo Laporte, and ladies and gentlemen. For the first time, no, actually, Rich has been a regular filling in for me for years. Rich DeMuro, everybody, from KTLA and Rich on TV, and the new host of the show starting next year. Hello, Rich. Hey, Leo. Thanks for having me on. Wow. He's a little nervous now. All of a sudden, <laughs> you got nervous. You, so, you said we weren't going to talk about it, and uh, here we go. You know, Steve Martin leaked it. I, ah, man, you uh, can't win. No, I said it was okay. January 7th, your first show, every Saturday in this time slot, uh, yes. on uh, on all of the same stations, uh, Rich on Tech is the name of the show, and uh, you're going to be doing basically the same thing, right, or no? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be uh, callers. It's going to be, you know, tech news. It's going to be gadgets, reviews, uh, I got interesting a, interviews. I got a travel guy, a photography guy, a <laughs> home theater guy I could lend you if you if you had any use for him. Absolutely. We will be doing guests for sure. Um, and, and, you know, look, I've followed the show for many, many years. Um, you have, you've just been an amazing host. And uh, I hear that... Uh, you know, you want your weekends back. And I understand that because you're you know, giving yours up. I'm, Congratulations. I'm giving mine up. And yeah. so, you know, we'll see how this goes. But, um, you know, to me, it's interesting because, you know, I already do a, a podcast that's kind of similar where I, you know, answer the questions that people send me. And this is a service. This is really, I see it as a public service. People Absolutely. have so many questions about this stuff and nobody explains it to them. And searching on Google, you could say, oh, just search on Google. Have you ever tried to search Google for an answer on something tech related? You get a million different opinions. So Many of them nice wrong. To have someone that you trust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, in fact, this was a big part of me uh, being willing to leave. Uh, I did not want to leave uh, our wonderful audience in the lurch because I know, you know, we talk, you hear it. So many people uh, frustrated at, at wit's end, don't know what to do. And and it's it is, as you say, it's a public service. And I can't think of anybody better. Uh, to do this show, to take it over than Rich, because you you have that same ability to make it easy to explain what's going on. And I think you share my interest in really making a difference and helping people uh, yeah, understand that is, this stuff. You've been doing it for, that is, you started at CNET, right? I started at CNET um, and, you know, I, I actually, so I get a call when I'm at CNET one day and the person, the caller says, hey, can you do the same thing you're doing at CNET for this TV station in Los Angeles? And I said, really? 
what does a TV station want with like a tech person? <laughs> and we, you know, we went there and uh, it's, so that only lasted for a little bit, but then that same person went to KTLA where I'm at now. And we did the same exact thing that didn't seem to work at that station. And we've been doing it for over 10 years now at KTLA. So it's been phenomenal. Um, the, the number one thing I realized is that people just, they're busy. You're doing your job. You're raising your kids. You've got things to do more so than figuring out how to change the wallpaper on your iPhone, right? So that's why you need someone like us to tell you this stuff and to explain it to you and also to not look down upon you for not knowing. Like, I'm a nerd. I get it. I, I tinker with this stuff every weekend, every day, practically. Uh, my wife today, she said, Rich, really? Now I got to switch to the Amazon Fire TV cube in the living room? <laughs> I said, yeah, we're testing it out. We've got to, you know, just have Apple TV forever. Oh, um, oh I'm and then so I sorry. My wife says you can't ever die because I won't know how to watch a show. <laughs> That's so true. Jeez. Which remote do I Which pick remote? up? I've, well, I've honey, tried to make things easy. Yeah. I printed out a, a document with pictures that we keep in a drawer where the remotes are <laughs> to explain what to do. It's, uh, it's, it's, this is crazy. It's too complicated. It is. It's when I sit there. Okay. So this is a good indicator. When I get like, I, someone pitched me on a tech product. There were these glasses that can kind of translate in real time. And I'm like, all right, send me a pair. Let me try them out. They're like, oh, hold on. We'd like to meet with you first before no, we send them no, and explain no. this and tell you that. And you have to download this. I said, ah, sorry, never mind. Uh, if it's that complicated for me, the average consumer is never going to figure it out. So you, you can't. They're not going to have a meeting with the CEO to figure these classes exactly. out. It's hysterical. So, Rich, I want you to come on the show. I want everybody to get, you know, certainly Rich has filled in for me for years. So I know a lot of you know the voice, know the name. You watch him on TV. Uh, but I would love for you to come every week on. And maybe we can do, like, I was thinking a holiday gift guide. Because one of the things that happens when you have a geek in your life and you're not is you buy them the wrong thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And and we don't want you to buy the wrong thing for the geek in your life or if you're buying it for yourself. So you actually have a whole uh, thing that you do uh, on your website, rich on tech TV, uh, kind of a gift guide. So I would like to do that on the show if, if you don't mind it. And also yeah. to get you used to talking to yourself in a small room for uh, several hours a week. <laughs> well, I have been married for a long time, so I'm <laughs> quite used to talking to myself. You have anyway, you have two small kids? I've got uh, two kids. Uh, they're not so small anymore. They're eight and 11. Oh my so gosh. I remember when they were actually small and now, you know, they're at that stage where they just play Roblox all day. So I don't know if that's like a phase or just a stage of youth, but uh, it's they don't want anything for the holidays except a new iPad, so that, you know, their games play better. They're actually playing this new game on Roblox that I kind of like. I'm, I'm kind of against Roblox, but uh, <laughs> it's a drawing game. So you you draw stuff. And so now they're all interested in the Apple Pencil. And I said, let me see the developer of that game. Was this someone that was funded by the Apple Pencil, uh, Big Apple Pencil? Because <laughs> <laughs> now you want to buy more Apple Pencils, kids. It's Big Apple Pencil. That's always what it comes down to. Big oh, Apple totally. Pencil. They're trying to do this. So you let your kids play it, but you're not a fan. I'm not a fan because it, and I talk to a lot of parents that have this issue, is it kind of just takes them in and they become a different person. They're like, they're engrossed in this game and there's no real end to the games most of the time. And so it can present a challenge for parents that are trying to get their kids to, you know, maybe go outside or do something other than playing Roblox. Excuse but me, but course, my watch you know, thinks I oh. just uh, had a hard fall. I just want to say I did not fall. Please <laughs> do not call 911. It does did that a lot. Really? Yeah, really? I think I, I must slam slams, my hand. He slams his hand Did you a lot. see me do that? And, and you did a little one. I did that, a little that's not. That should not be enough no, to. Uh, that one you should, should not have. That should not. I've only gotten that like twice in my um, time with the Apple Watch and. Both times were when I was like wrestling with the kids. I get it all the time. Rich is also the author. Oh, I did it again. Wait a <laughs> <What>? minute. <laughs> he okay. slams his hands a lot. <laughs> Slam my hand. You've got the sensitivity turned up. Or you have a, you might, your your ultra might be. Uh, oh, you could tell. Like, I have the big yeah, oh, one. Oh, yeah, I could. Oh. I have the big one. Um, Rich is the That's author of a book, an iPhone, a wonderful iPhone book, which everybody should get called. I have it here one, somewhere. 101 handy tech tips for the iPhone. Um it, it you know, it's that was such a great experience to do that to write that book. It really was. You learn that, that, when you write. 
those a- things. Exactly. You become an expert. Rich Demuro, we'll talk to you next week. <laughs> Rich on TV, tech.tv. Thank you for taking over because I need you. Thank you, Thank Rich. you, Leo. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> it's all falling apart. I unplugged my headphones. I'm going to sit off the watch. I was just, I have your book right here, I think, but anyway. I was, I was like, is time. Leo like ending the show? He's just like unplugging. He's done. <laughs> unplugged, He's getting yeah, He just walks walking away walking sometimes. Away. The, the 911 is on their way. <laughs> anyway. Oh my gosh. Uh, it, you know, okay. I, I did not know you weren't doing Sunday. That's that's a relief to me, frankly. I thought he's going to do seven days a week. No, that, that would be that's insane. That's not sustainable. That was, yeah. No, that's not sustainable. So and this way was... we take turns doing brunch. I'll get yes. Saturday, you get Sunday. <laughs> totally. I'll just uh, drink more on the day that I get it. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know why 19 years ago I didn't just say, can we just do one, one day? day? I don't know what I was thinking. You well, thought one day more. You're smart, you're Rich. You were figuring, smart. look, the people that don't get through on the first day, they come in for the second day. They do. And it's just. <laughs> they do. Believe me, they do. Uh, anyway, uh, so good. Thank right. your wife for me. Thank okay. you, kids, for me. I really appreciate it. Um, thank your wife for me because she, um, you know, she's been instrumental in a lot of this as well. Yes. So thank you, Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. Uh, if I didn't have Lisa, I don't know. I don't know what would be going on. So yeah, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it. She is definitely. In fact, she's in there talking, calming everybody down. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> she's talking people off the ledge. Oh no. Okay. Thanks, Rich. Have a great day. We'll talk right. the same time next Saturday if that works. Well, wait a minute. It's the day after Thanksgiving. If it doesn't work for you, you can skip it. We'll do it two weeks. Okay. You, you decide. We'll, Just we'll let me chat. Know. You have my Perfect. you have my number. Thanks, Rich. Okay. Thanks, Bye-bye. Leo. Bye, Micah. Take See care, you. everyone. Perfect guy to uh, to take over the show, I think. Wish you'd step back from that ledge, my friend. My friend. Is that what the, she was played? She played that song. She did. She, Lisa <laughs> played the song in uh, in Discord. <laughs> she pulled Discord? out her guitar and she played she, that song in yeah. Discord. Closing time. <laughs> na, 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 and alcohol, na, 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 whiskey and beer. Here. Closing time. I know yeah, I want to take Do you know the story home. of that song? No. I always thought it was kind of skeezy. Like, I know I want to take me home, blah, 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 closing time. He wrote it when his wife was starting to deliver their child. And he wrote it as the, ch- the wife saying to the baby, it's closing time. You can't stay here. <laughs> oh, like inside. <laughs> yes. Oh. And the baby saying, I know who I want to take me home. Oh. Isn't when I learned that I thought, oh, that's so. Sweet. I wonder why there was such a complex metaphor that, like, that just. Well, you know how singers are; they don't <laughs> they don't write anything normal, and straight. Babies drinking whiskey and beer. I just. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe he's lying, but that's what he said. That's what the inspiration for the song was: his first child. Closing time. Yeah, actually, one show is probably enough. A lot, like KGO, only took the Sunday show. If they don't, and they would tape delay it. So if he does one show, it's the same. So. Um, yeah, I didn't. I did not. I should have asked him. I thought he was doing Saturday and Sunday. That's good for us because, yeah. in effect, we're doing Sunday. We are. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have the same. We'll be here at the same time, eleven to two Sundays, right before Twit. Um, it won't be the same show because it can be a little. First of all, there won't be nineteen minutes an hour of commercials. Yeah. So. We're going to have some fun. Yeah. And, and I think we might want to make it a little shorter. I don't know. Yeah. We're talking about some different things. And there won't be a number at the start. At yeah. What we're going to encourage people to do is use their phones to Zoom in. Right? We're going to use Zoom? Zoom. Okay. Yeah. So we'll put, have a link if, for you. Yeah. And if put Zoom on your phone. You don't even, you you should, but you don't even have to. You can just it's do it in the browser, in the browser and it works. And the advantage well, of that actually. is we know your camera and microphone will work. We've had so much trouble with people on their PCs getting it working. No, we're not going to use TalkShoe. We're going to we're going to do video calls via Zoom. Yeah, and everybody knows how to use Zoom now, which is nice. So now my evil plan is revealed. Which part? Well, people, because Rich which used to do our fill-in. Every time I would go away, Rich would do the show, uh-huh. which was very nice of him. Then all of a sudden, you filled in. And you're showing up on Saturdays and people are going, well, what happened to Rich? Well, this was all part of the plan. We wanted to get Micah used to doing this because Micah and I will be doing the podcast on Sundays. Uh, and then I wanted, is, and but so we, we were working on that. But we knew Rich was in the wings. And when they said, uh, is is it okay with you if Rich takes over the show? I said, okay with me. It's, it's a lifesaver. So Rich on Tech starting 
and I had to check the calendar. I think January 7th will be his uh, his first show, Saturday, January 7th. Am I right on that? Yes. 8888 Ask Leo, Micah Sergeant Leo Laporte, taking your calls. Episode, by the way, 1945. And there's only one regret I have. There's two regrets I have. Okay. Regrets, you've had a few, but then again... Too few to mention. Uh, two, that's not many. <laughs> but I'm going to mention them. If we continued doing the show for one more year, it would be 20 years. Uh -huh. Okay, that is a that's reasonable a regret. regret. It's weird to end in ni after 19. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's what happens. The other one is I really wanted to get to the year 1956. Something happened that year. That's my birth year. <laughs> that's when closing <laughs> and we're, and time. We're, I, think, I think our last show, I don't know, i have to check. It's 1955. <laughs> I think it is. So, uh, or 50, yeah. So anyway, that's minor. We're, we're Those are minor. We're the numbering, though. We could just change the numbering. Can't we? Yeah, we could just skip ahead. We can ahead. continue the numbering. Yeah. So nineteen. Oh, yeah, we will continue the numbering. That's yeah. right. Okay. Tech guy. Yeah. 1956, okay. ask the tech go. guy. Yeah, and if you do subscribe to the podcast, nothing's going to change. You just get one instead of two a week. Uh, if you watch the stream, it'll be Sunday. Um, yeah. 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. But otherwise, and, and we'll probably be a little looser. And we'll probably be swearing like crazy because for years I've not been able to use That's any true. bad cuss words. No words no, on there. No cuss words. <laughs> Just joking. Let's go to Duluth, D Duluth, Minnesota. Bob is on the line. Hi, Bob. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Welcome. Trying to trying to stay inside and stay warm. It's what's the, What's it like in Duluth right now? It's it's windy and it's about twelve degrees outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So it's good weather to stay in. <laughs> I was watching the uh, Packers game. Uh, they were at Lambeau Field in uh, in Green Bay, and uh, yes, and uh, it was about twelve degrees. I think it was ten degrees wind chill factor. And uh, the, the so we're talking to somebody tailgating, and and they said, "Do you like the cold?" She said, "Yeah, this isn't Minnesota. <laughs> we like it here." And I thought, "You have not spent much time in Minnesota, young lady. It gets pretty cold." Yes, it does. Yes, it yeah. does. What can we do for you, Bob? By the, by the way, there's a Laporte, Minnesota that's west of here, about uh, yeah. 100 miles. So my dad, when I was young, went to every Laporte in the country. There are almost, really? well, this Laporte guy got around. There's a Laporte in most states. Mm. Is there? Yeah, and it's all, I think it's Jacques de Laporte, who, <laughs> I don't know Established what he, established all these he was, he was He was busy, let's just put it that way. <laughs> what can I do for you, Bob? Well, um, my wife, well, this is kind of a prequel to that. She got caught on a uh, uh, a uh, fishing scam. Oh, oh no! Credit. You heard you heard what Steve Martin, you know, got. These scams are, are awful. Abundant. Well, and this this might be even more complicated one. She did another survey, and she I said, "What was this for?" She thought, "Well, maybe Costco." They asked a bunch, and they. As a uh, gift, they would send you uh, a, a wireless repeater. Oh, nice! Got but, it. but, but the and I got it. And I, said, we, and I said, "Well, we don't need this. We've got one already. I've got a Netgear one already." Much set up. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this is, but this one has no brand name on it. Yeah. And there's, uh, and there's no, uh, there's. There's, it's, it just says wireless and re, and, re, and Wi-Fi repeater. And, 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 uh, and did they ask for any money or they just sent this to her? No, they just sent it to her. Wow. And, and, I, and, I, and I start thinking. What could they uh, do if you put that on your network in your house? I wonder. Exactly. <laughs> this is a pretty kind of sophisticated. That's my very thought. I thought, you know, I'm not going to even try. It's no. It's sort of like the, uh, it's sort of like the, uh, when uh, they were taking thumb drives or... or uh, yeah, never. They call yeah. that a candy drop with a thumb drive. They drop them in the exactly. parking lot and stuff and... People plug it oh, in. Oh, free thumb drive. Yeah. And this could be... This could be even a more sophisticated one where you you do a survey online and we'll send this out to you free and it won't cost you anything. So I'm... You know, I, 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 what I, I guess what I'm getting from you is you're confirming my suspicions. Yeah, it, here's what I would guess. It's completely possible that the survey was legit and they sent you something worth a couple of bucks, which even if it's nothing, you know, if it's a 
even if it's legit, it's going to be a junky, a very bad repeater. Repeater. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. but but here's what I would guess: if I were a bad guy, what I would do is I would put a little Bitcoin miner in there. Uh, this is a very common uh, infection that's going around. They, they, uh, you can go to a website and without your knowledge, they'll install on your browser something that will, you know, the way you generate cryptocurrencies by doing math problems. Now, of course, your computer, uh, at this router, these aren't super fast. They're going to take a long time to make any money. But if you send out a million of them, you might make, you know, ten or $15,000 a day. Yeah. So... That's the first thing I would suspect is some sort of crypto scam. A little harder for them to monetize, but also possible, is it could be used as part of a botnet. A lot of viruses do this. They get on your machine and they, they, don't, they don't do anything visibly bad to you. But what they do is they make the machine available to a bad guy who then can harness hundreds of thousands of machines in blackmail schemes. So that's another thing they might do. And here's how the blackmail scheme might work. Uh, Super Bowl coming up. A uh, bad guy might call a betting site, quite a few of them, and say, it would be a shame if your website were to be down on the Super Bowl. If you give me some money, I can make sure that that will not happen. And, the, of course, this is the old protection racket. And, this, and the, what's going on behind the scenes is he has 100,000 computers. He can aim at that site on Super Bowl Sunday. And then the site is inaccessible to, to its customers. So that is a very common threat as well. So that's another thing they might use it for. The least likely is that they'd use it to spy on you. That's too, that's too retail. That's too much work. You know, they spy on you. What are they going to do with it? Maybe they, they catch a credit card number flying through the air. Probably not, but maybe they did. They could steal it. That's too hard and too low. The payout's too low to make it worthwhile. So it's more likely they would use your machine for their own evil ends, Bitcoin or crypto of some kind, or to attack other machines. But in any event, you you don't want it. You don't need it. No, not really. Don't need it. Don't, don't, don't I mean, want I'm it. I'm not going to plug it in. So It'd be an interesting just, thing. I wish I had the skills. Maybe find some YouTuber. I know, saying to get it. And say, I got this. Take it apart. And plug it in in their walled off system and be able to check it. Yeah. They, yeah. could, they could do that. Uh, yeah. They could take it apart. They could see what the software is. They could see what the hardware is. They could see if it's malicious. Uh, yeah. They could well, tell by the signals coming out of it. I've got a couple of things i got to take into a couple of tech places. I've got an old phone I need to get some pictures off of, and I'd say, hey, would you like this? Yeah. See what it is? You know, yeah. you, Just warn you, them. Uh, this is how it, it, you know, it was free. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. always free. It's That's always to me. Uh, That's always the the warning. Uh, well, that was, that was kind of my thought on it. Is be be you know, be cautious of what's free. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Because so. there's always a cost, right? There's no such thing as a free lunch. Yeah, uh, sure. One of our chat room a guy says, "I would take that repeater and introduce it to the underside of my truck tire." <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, don't whatever you do, don't put it on your network. Don't pow don't power it up no, at all. I, I hadn't I hadn't planned yeah. it. Good instincts. Do that it's at a all. really interesting so, scam. It though. really is. Yeah, it really is. It, well, and I don't, we don't know that it is, but I mean, it's, we don't, we don't, but I, it's not I, worth uh, it to find out. I, so. Hey, okay. a pleasure, Bob. Stay warm. Stay yeah, inside. Well. Keep listening. <laughs> yeah. Dick D. Bartolo coming up next. I think my fears were unwarranted. Which ones? I was really worried that. The show would descend into this, oh, we're going to miss you. And nobody said that at all. <laughs> so I think maybe that's fine. You missed it, Leo, actually. Huh? You, you mean on the calls? Yeah, I thought... we it's get happening it. in the chat. In the chat, yeah, that's fine. I, okay. Well, that's fine. Yeah, you were in worried fact, people would call in and say... No, I was feeling bad that I couldn't tell, you know, our club twit people and our chatters. Yeah. No, no, no. I want them to know. But I was afraid that the show would be all calls going oh right and so that's yeah you don't have to say anything it's fine <laughs> i think that that's more likely to happen starting next week well Once uh, what i'm hoping is we'll get it. that most people weren't even listening <laughs> and won't know and the regular calls will be fine. just swiped away yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> hello dickie d Hey, Rich, how you doing? Uh, Rich DeMuro, Rich on Tech here. How are you? Yeah, it's great. Thank <laughs> God someone took over. I... <laughs> uh, Leo guy, he kept slapping his hands down on the desk. 
Calling the emergency I, services. I've more than once set this off. It happened <laughs> on Windows Weekly too, by hitting it on the deck. I wonder if because of the metal links, if when you hit it, it kind of bounces against the the. You know what I mean? If there's I, more to it. Lisa and I both have this habit. She also has this habit of like slapping, but she wears this big honk and big <laughs> wedding ring. So it makes a huge. And sound. she'll slap me on the thigh or the hand, Ooh. and it's like, ow! <laughs> that actually. She hurt. knows. I say, don't. That hurts. Um, but this would probably be, the, yeah, similar. And I guess I got the same habit of <laughs> emphasizing. Yeah, emphasizing. Yeah. 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 Wow. How are you, Dickie D? Um, good. And you, sir? I am uh, good. We are, um, we are wrapping up the show with you and a little bit of disco. And Very good. Uh, so the way it's going to work, Rich isn't starting until January 7th. And okay. you heard I said all the people... Uh, he could bring back any of uh, our regulars if he wants, and I think he might. I'm going to send that information off to him. Okay. But you're going to do move the Gizwiz to Wednesday after Twig, Wednesday evening. Correct. And you don't mind that because you stay up really late anyway. Uh, yeah, that, that's fine. It's 8 o'clock instead of 5 o'clock for you. Uh, and then uh, and that will be uh, something that the club will have. So if you say, oh, and like Beatmaster said, I'm, you know, it's too late for me because I'm in Switzerland, uh, join the club and you'll get it on the Twit Plus feed uh, as usual, I believe. That's how we're going to do that. You get your Saturdays back because I know you like to disco on Saturday. <laughs> and, uh, and I get my Saturday back. And then Sunday, Mike and I will be in. And then from time to time, we'll absolutely bring you in on Sundays, uh, you know, just for fun. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, this is not a surprise to Dick, by the way. Yeah, I already, everybody I already said it. <laughs> Actually, it was because I sent it to your AOL it was, address. Yeah. <laughs> because you were saying during the show, so are you happy about that? Yeah, and or? you said, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? about? And uh, and I said, well, I sent it to you. And you said, did you send it to AOL.com? I said, yes. She said, I haven't been on there in years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and on that's BOL. just how high tech we are. That's okay, because you know where Steve sent this book to 140 Keller Street, the cottage. Oh my gosh! So <laughs> I said, "Thank you so much for having your assistant send me the book, but <laughs> you should give her my new address." He is such. I'm I so touched. Did you hear what he said uh, in the in the in the? No, I didn't. I just yeah, heard. He it. called to make the okay. announcement. Yeah, which is really sweet. Yeah. Oh, that's great. It's really nice. Here we go. Wow. Can you do that, Dick? It's too, it's too high for me. Oh, yeah. Wow. Ooh, you can do it. I can. Wow. But I did. I need some water first. <laughs> uh, Dick DiBartolo, Disco Dick, we call him. He joins us every week. He is, of course, best known as, for five decades, Mad's maddest writer. But he's also uh, our personal gizmo wizard, our giz whiz. Hello, Dickie D. Hey, Leo. How are you? I am great. I am great. Good. What have we got? I have my well, uh, know, I have my chops, um, my finger sticks. <laughs> I just got here. my order in too. <laughs> uh, I have my uh, my weird lights, uh, nice. my fog machine. What was that thing oh, you got it, your it, niece? It, that oh uh, the bubble, the, the bubble, the foam thing. The foam. Oh the uh, foam. Yeah, she loved that. So yes. so give us well, something it, more we can buy. Oh well, yes, okay. Well now this happened with uh, on the Gizwiz, Chad Johnson started with this gadget and before he was into the third sentence i bought it <laughs> <laughs> nice it's oh we're talking good stuff down. you may you may have uh known that i sort of like disco yes so chad finds this pair of disco lights that can be operated by a usb <laughs> Or with three AA batteries. We've come so far, haven't we? <laughs> this means USB you can disco. bring them with you to a party, and they are really great. Oh, Look you have it go. on now. Yeah. It's like, wow, it's turning I have it on now. I, I made a little video for you, uh, for the people who uh, watch this show. And it, it, it really is, you, you get two of them. You get two remote controls. 
You can hit flashing. You can hit match to music. Oh, and they have suction cups. And the cups. great thing oh. is they are under 20 bucks for the whole set. Can you and put them on funny. the ceiling? Do they have... Or do you, yeah, no. you, you, you know what? It's very funny because people are uh, in the reviews. It's got great reviews, 2,500, almost 2,500 reviews, four and a half stars. But, you know, I spent thousands of dollars when I converted my 50-foot houseboat. <laughs> you to, think he's joking, uh, folks. He ain't joking. I can't <laughs> stop. when the, I, I just played some music so I could see that that the disco lights would pulse to the music and then uh, I couldn't stop. It started and it's one of the ways uh, I stay slim. Awesome. <laughs> I love this video. Go to gizwiz.viz uh, and click the button that says the gizwiz visits the tech guy. And whatever you do, you got to watch the YouTube video uh, Dick put up. Uh, it's currently unlisted. I don't know if you mean to have it be unlisted or do you want it to be oh, public? Oh, you know what? I, 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 I usually have it unlisted. It's, it's already got a copyright hit. But oh, because of the music. Yeah, but it's okay. It says uh, you cannot monetize this video. Oh, all right. It We're, is okay to use the music. Oh, that's nice but, you, but I don't monetize my videos anyway. What's the I music mean, that you're using? Uh, it was... Uh, don't, take my love away. don't take my love away. Don't take my love away. Something like that. Some you something. Know. See, this is why I don't understand. These artists should love it that you're bringing these songs exactly. back. Exactly. They should thank you. Yes. No. Absolutely. A absolutely. Well, I mean that uh, that that's fine with me. All they did is that the the music company said if the video makes any money, they get it. They get it. That's fine because it's not gonna. Yeah, I have no problem. With that. They get nothing. Bupkis, zero, <laughs> zilch, nada. Gizwiz.biz is the website, G I Z W I Z dot B I Z. If you click the button, the Gizwiz visits the tech guy, you'll have uh, the video, the links, all of that stuff. In fact, everything he's ever mentioned on the show. Uh, plus a lot of other stuff on that site, the gadgets he mentions on World News Now, a link to the great Gizwiz podcast he does with Chad Johnson at gizwiz.tv. The, oh, let's not forget the What the Heck Is It contest. Oh, yeah. Got a new one for November, December, and it is a close-up of a gizmo or a gadget. Yeah. Can, uh, hmm. Huh. What do you think, Mike? I don't uh, I'm feeling uh, a water bo plastic water bottle crusher. Oh, that's a good idea. See, I thought it was a breast pump. Oh. But I, you know, it's it's so hard to know. Anyway, the good news is there are in fact six mad autograph by this guy, Mad Magazines for the right answer, but there's 12 for the best wrong answers. So you don't really have <laughs> Look at look at Dick. You got lights on your head. <laughs> you don't oh, yeah. really have it's, to know what it is. It's also great for that, too. <laughs> I never, you know what? It says that there's a suction cup. I've been unable to find it. But in place of a mirrored ball, this really works well. Or so that suggestion. when you're bicycling or scootering, I know you like to scooter around the uh, Upper West Side, yeah. put it on your head. This is good. <laughs> this, this is good. No one would miss you. It would be obvious. Yeah, yeah it's very safe. That's a good idea. <laughs> Here yeah. he comes. Gizwiz.biz. Do you know yet which uh, mad we're playing for? We don't know yet. Uh, we just know that you'll be playing for February 2023. We have no idea what the cover is. So when when he gets a, a copy of the cover, he'll put it up on the website. And you exactly. Can see. exactly. It's so nice, though. I have a collection of mads now, thanks to you. So does Micah. Mm -hmm. uh, nicely autographed. And and just uh, this. There's I loved this 70th anniversary issue. So many great memories. Oh, and thank you. It was really, it was really fantastic. Can't can't wait to see what the next one is. Gizwiz dot biz. Um, boy, that was a short one. I have now four minutes and nothing to do. Oh, that's okay. Can you dance? Well, let's talk about yeah. what you're going to do on your new show. <laughs> Pretty much the same thing. <laughs> the same thing. Okay. okay. Yeah. In fact, if you are just tuning in, we did uh, announce uh, for the first time, and the press release is going to go out on Monday. Uh, that I will be retiring from radio after 46 years. In How many years have you been at MAD? Uh, 55. So close, right? Yeah. Uh, but you're still working. You never retired. Well, you don't get paid for all the years that they did just oh, reprint. Oh, they keep that stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, they own, they own everything. Actually, I didn't... 
Premier owns this. They could keep running the tech guy. The thing is, the stuff I do, it gets out of date pretty quickly. Of course, remember oh, you used to oh. come up to Toronto? We'd do call for help up there for yes. uh, Rogers in Toronto. They were airing those. Some of those shows were 15 years old. They were still airing them up to last year. Yeah, well, that rave review about the Atari 800, <laughs> I saw that Friday. You joke. You joke. But I would get emails from people saying, I just saw you and Amber... And this was last year on TV, and Amber was showing you this site she was all excited about called YouTube. And you said, wow, <laughs> that's really cool. I never heard of that. You've never heard of YouTube, and you call yourself a tech guy? And that's I had to explain, no, we funny. taped that in 2004. <laughs> that was a long time ago. That's very funny. These things live on. I remember Amber well, the and I... The great thing about, about reproductions in Mad is that people have all seen the movies... Yeah. And so the parodies Mad is eternal. Stand up. Mad is timeless. It really is timeless. And that's one of the things that's so great about Mad. Go to his website. Uh, I guess the book is sold out now, Good Days in Mad. Yes. Maybe, maybe you can get him to reprint that. But there's other Mad memorabilia. Dick's also the guy, legendary guy, who saved the match game by coming up. In the match game, when it first started, wasn't funny. And you came name up a with... Name a flower. Yeah. Name a name flower. A oh, bird. Lord. <laughs> Yeah. Name it was, it was this you can do with a potato. <laughs> <laughs> it was this close to being canceled, and Dick said, "Why don't we? Uh, why don't we try funny? <laughs> why don't we try to be funny?" <laughs> and uh, you saved the show. How many years has it run since then? Like Boy, I uh, I didn't get any royalties, but I got 18 years of employment. That's so all that, that matters. I kind of say the same thing about this. So, uh, <laughs> 19, right? Tune in again next oh, week. Oh, yeah, 19. Yeah, 19 years okay. as a tech guy. Uh, we will continue through December 18th, Mike and I, uh, on Saturdays and by myself on Sundays. And then Rich tomorrow takes over uh, next year with Rich on tech. And Mike and I will continue in the podcast space where we don't get nearly as much attention or money. But... But you we know, do get to have fun. We, we get to do what we want, and that's all that's, that matters. That's, that means a lot. Doing what you want means a lot. It means everything. Thank you, Dickie D. What I okay, always buddy. wanted was to work with you, and you too, Micah. Thank you, uh, Lady Laura, our musical director, Kim Schaffer, a phone angel. Thanks to you for joining us. Have a great geek week. Bye-bye. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security on Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.